Hi, good evening, and welcome to the Deerfield uh, Board of Health Select Board meeting for May 6, uh, 2020. The time is um, just about four minutes after 6 p.m. Sorry for the delay. We've been um, trying to get <laughs> this error of uh, technology and meetings has been quite a struggle. So um, that's an understatement. So um, we, I just want to make people aware we've updated on FCAT. Um, so if you're watching on TV, there's a, a way to sign uh, a, new, a new PIN number to get into the meeting if you want to speak. Um, I think the link still works uh, up there. If you're on your computer, you can link in that way through the URL. Um, but I'll just read this. Um, so meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with um, adequate alternative means of public access and where required public um, participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order uh, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30, Section 20, um, remote meeting connection. So this is broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Um, the dial-in number is 206-331-4836. Uh, and um, I believe the sign-in number is 72 Three nine eight. If I got that right, I don't know. So, <clears throat> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Um, so uh, let's see. So then, um, call-in participants should dial in, um, enter in the PIN when prompted. The public is encouraged to log in using their computers or smart device for full participation. Uh, to log in, please register at www. Uh, excuse me. W uh, t t h t t p forward slash www.anymeeting.com forward slash P, is that IID? Yes. Uh, and the equal sign EE57D882834F31. Okay. I need my glasses for this. This is crazy. I feel like yeah. I need to be a computer tech. Um, let's see. And uh, meeting... Meeting attendees should uh, mute phones unless asking questions or commenting. All attendees should um, wait to speak until further part participants are finished. And also, if you are going to speak, um, you know, please state your name clearly um, and then um, ask your question. And then when you're done, um, you know, say you're finished speaking. So it just helps people kind of take time and, and not talk over everybody. Um, and we know who's speaking and, and, and you know, hearing your questions well. Um, as everyone can see, I'm wearing a mask tonight because that's the new uh, way to ours. go. Everybody's got masks here, but we're, um, we're definitely distanced. Um, it makes it hard if everybody wears glasses to, um, <laughs> to, to work and use these because you get fogged up pretty quick. Um, so anyways, um, let's move on to the agenda. Um, I'm called the meeting to order. Um, the scheduled hearings and appearances. First is uh, Barbara Hancock, our annual um, election warrant for uh, approval and related election discussion. So mm -hmm. why don't we start with Thanks. that and I'll Great. clean my glasses. Thank so you, I Barbara, for coming yes, in. Yeah, for coming really, in. truly really has confusion. A, a nice full discussion last time and some of yep. the uh, thoughts we put aside to kind of make a decision today about yes. maybe. So yep. one of them being the um, annual town election. We um, certainly uh, moved it to June 8th, and, and we're sticking with that, um, but we had discussed um, the pros and cons of shortening up the hours. Um, but as we found out just moments ago, um, <laughs> because our bylaw dictates the hours, we're unable to change them. So we, we will have a full day of election. So mm. I was kind of worried about that, and that's yes. why I didn't want to vote it last time, because, I know. Um, because that says that. However... That Please. doesn't mean that we're encouraging no. um, voting in person uh, for everybody's sake. Right. Um, we've, we've been doing great about staying home, and uh, so we don't Keeping want all that to be for, for nothing. Yeah. Yep. So it will be, um, you know, this is not a building set up to hold an election. So right. uh, we do have to modify it to have an election here on any given day. So now to have it be... Um, allowing for social distancing is going to be a challenge. Um, so there's no way around it that it's going to be 
um, lines, obviously, because mm -hmm. we have to spread each other out. We can only allow so many people in the building. Uh, frankly, we only want so many people in the building, and we do want distancing. So yep. I don't know what the weather is going to be. Let me say Bring that again. Umbrella. I don't know what the weather is going to be, so <laughs> I don't want anyone waiting it. outside. Um, so yeah. we're going to do our best to move things along, but we are going to make it so easy for people to vote by mail that we're going to be just lonely down here on Election Day, I hope. I hope so, so too. Um, we, we have the uh, ballots ordered, and now that we know what the hours are going to be, um, I'm going to ask you tonight to sign the warrant to post the annual town election, yep. and we can get this underway. Great. Um, so we will post it on the website and, and get our act together in the next couple of days, certainly okay. by the end of the week. So yep. plenty and plenty and plenty of time to ask for a ballot yep. and to get a ballot and to get it back to us. Plenty right. of time. Um, the biggest thing with applying for an early voting absentee ballot is that you need to sign it. Um, yep. That's the biggest sign thing that people forget. You need to sign that you want it, that yes. you are a voter and that you want the ballot sent to you. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, Barbara, can you I'm, just go over that procedure? I'm going really to. Careful. So I made up this little catchy. Um, oh, nice. I don't know if everybody can see it. Love but, it. Um, oh, great. To encourage people to vote by mail. And the reason I did that is because I'm going to put on the back of it the ballot, the, the, uh, the application. ballot application. Okay. So if you see this, it's probably going to be black and white because it's yeah. cheaper. Yep. But um, I'm going to try and just get these all over town, whoever will. Yep. allow us to leave a pile there but you certainly yep. can get them from us yep. um you can call we can mail one to you they're going to be on the website so yep. if you have the ability at print. home to print um from our website you can print it all you have to do is write your name and address and where you want it sent and you have to sign it and sign it and then we'll send you a ballot you can fill it out and then just send it back to us that's yep. it great that's barbara it. could you Very could simple. you would you mind if i just have that no sure. i mean no just leave it there and I'll pick it up on the way out. Okay. I, I want to yeah. just look at it. Yeah. So it's self explanatory. It just is. why don't you and go? And I rewrote the directions down here to oh, try and kind of make it easier to make it personalized with our contact information. Yeah. But um, it's voter information, so name, legal voting um, address, date of birth, telephone number, email address. If you don't have an email address, I don't, I don't care. That's right. fine. But it's it's nice these days to be able, if you have a question, to get a yeah. hold of somebody. I, I cannot know. email a ballot, though. Right. You can't do that. But yep. um, this is so, unprecedented. So the key, the key to this is to sign in the request. Yes. yes. Because what you're doing mm -hmm. is then you are matching that signature. Right. To the signature on the on that ballot that is well, mailed down. Well, not the necessarily. It's just um, actually a technical thing that under the pain and penalty of perjury that. But you're it, but asking there, for if the there is a yeah. question, you can match. Your signature. Yeah, we need to make sure you're a registered voter. Right. Um, if you're right. not a registered voter, please you register. Have, um, oh, I should know the date. The it's the Friday, uh, the twenty. Someone. I can help you. I should have wrote it down. I'm sorry. It's 10 days before the election. It's the last Friday of May. Oh, it's, it's will be before the last day that you can register to vote if you're not already Monday. registered. So the 29th would um, be yes, the last. Yes, the 29th. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Yep. Till 8 o'clock. Um, so, right. so people, if they are not registered, they have till May 29th right. to register. Which is half the time. Usually so how are, how are you doing registration? Um, actually, most people don't even come in anymore to register. You They'll can register online. Many different online. places, you know, right? You can yep. call us. We can send you a, a... I've got them out on the table, yep. um, voter registrations. Um, yep. Okay. If anyone's been to the registry lately, you probably... Yeah. Right, you got your new... Yeah. Yeah. I okay. think most people, you know, a lot of people are registered to vote. Voter registration yep. hours are not usually well attended. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if you're new to town, maybe, or something yes. like that, sure. um, and you haven't registered yet, then you have until 10 okay. days before, which is the last Friday in May. Okay. Um, and then where to mail the ballot to, and then sign it. This last section is if you have someone helping you fill out this application, they need to fill that in. But most times, you're all going to do is put your name and address, where you want the ballot to go to, and sign it, and then send it to us. You can even scan and send it. You can fax this to me. Yep. Um, you can drop it off in the drop box. Yep. Um, Many mail it back you can to us. drop it off in the drop box. Okay. Yep. The application. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So anyway, I'll try and maybe put these at Cumberland Farms. I don't know All where over. anybody yep. is, but certainly yep. um, it's going to be on our easier. website by the end of the week. 
Um, uh, please and then, ask yeah. for a ballot and yes. mail it in. So uh, I'll try and have them all have this on the front. So if yep. you see this, um, it's got the bat, the application right on the back. Okay. And then okay. all the instructions with how to get a hold of us if you have any questions. Um, Great, yeah. Barbara. That's wonderful. Yeah, I, 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 I think I hope that to make it super question. easy. We're gonna include a, a little instructional thing with the ballot when we send it to you. So you know you're gonna have an envelope to send it back to us. It's all it's all gonna be figured out. Super easy. Great. Yeah. Um, to to make you feel better, um, mm -hmm. we were talking about uh, the selection stuff at our MAPCO um, yeah. call last night. And um, Williamsburg had their election mm -hmm. at, just last week, yeah. and they um, only had 20 voters come through. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's a small town, but they right. only had 20 voters, but they had 176 that did mail in. Yes. And they felt, um, you know, and they, had, they, had, they set their voting ballot um, box up in the lobby mm -hmm. of their town hall because you have to have it indoors apparently yeah and so yes. they had just had people stand six they marked out six feet right just like we are yep. six feet apart and 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 there was no no issues yeah. so I'm hoping people the same kind of percentages right hardly anyone will come in because right. it will be a pain in the neck yeah to vote in person whereas right. if you mail it in Right. So much it's easier. Done. Yeah. yeah. It's I mean, done. normally we allow, I don't know how many people are voting at one time on the floor, but this will probably be two people voting at a time, right. really. That will because probably so be very slow. Yeah. Very well, slow. I know Williamsburg yeah. is just one at a time. Yeah. So it was yeah. Right. Well, I will say that luckily we've gone through a couple rounds of early voting with the, with the uh, federal election. So yeah. I think people have. You know, the first time we had it, everyone was yeah. a little bit like, what's this about? And the second time, I think people are more and more comfortable with it. Yeah. So um, you're certainly going to see more of it in the fall. Right. So I think yep. people, it's nice that we kind of had those under our belt. Yep. So everyone's already kind of, you know, experienced yeah. it to some degree. So That's great. Especially us, too. So, so we, we have um, we have one, one term for select board, one mm -hmm. term for assessor. Uh, one term for constable for three years, um, one Deerfield School Committee member for three years, uh, one elector under Oliver Smith Will for one term, which is one year, um, Frontier Regional School Committee member for a term for three years, the moderator for a term of three years. There are two planning board uh, seats available for three years each, uh, mm -hmm. one Tilton Library trustee for a term of three years, one Tilton Library trustee for a term of two years, and one Tilton <laughs> Library trustee for a term of one year, because mm -hmm. they're staggering those yes. again. Yep. Thereafter, they'll be three year, but yep. this year. Yep. Yep. That's perfect. OK. Yes. And that's that. Yes. The only other thing, I don't know if you had an opportunity. I did kind of I did. write out a yes. plan yes. for um, Election Day. Yep. Uh, obviously, I'm going to have to alter it to the change back thing. the regular hours. Yep, I saw um, that. Yep. The, the only thing that we didn't talk about last time that I, I thought of afterwards is um, I'm not sure what decisions you want to make about the town offices um, mm -hmm. operating while we're having the election. I guess I would go out and say that I would recommend that nobody else be here that day. Yeah, I was. that's kind of where I was oh, thinking I'm, is that we absolutely. were going to close town yeah. hall yeah, that so day so that... The offices? Close yeah, I don't know if you want, um, you know, yeah. kind of a chill out time the next morning too. Or, yeah, because it's going to um, need to be just clean. Well, to clean everything. We're going to have to clean it. I mean, that's one of the reasons we don't, you know, don't have mm -hmm. any meetings here. Right. <coughs> because we, yeah, you'd have to clean the uh, offices before regular mm -hmm. people come in. So, right. We're going to have to contact the cleaning service mm -hmm. and make sure they clean. Um, in the morning. Before, well, what we were before and we after. talked about was clean before, right? <coughs> uh, I would just say the next morning following. Um, I will tell you briefly kind of the flow of what I was thinking yep. is to have them enter. I mean, I can't see mm -hmm. them entering any other way. Right. So have them enter there, um, you know, check in two separate voting booths, check out here a ballot box and have them exit the um, other that building. door there. Yep. At least it puts them in the front of the building. They're not exiting where they're entering. Right. Um, so the other thing that also does is keeps half the building without them being touched. So right. I'll have it blocked there. Yep. So there'll be no access to this hallway or this hallway or the kitchen. Right. Although now that they're here all day, that's going to be a little harder. I was thinking 
You mean the workers? Yeah. yeah. yeah I was thinking if workers. we were open from, you know, just four hours that I would just tell them, you know, right. the kitchen is no, off. No, I mean, they'll have, so, have to I, eat, so. I, yeah. yeah. I don't know if I'll have enough workers to make it so that they, anyway. So yeah. that part, We'll have know, to clean. Do my best. Maybe but, they can pack a lunch and eat outside. Uh -huh. But Casey, so you'll, you'll make arrangements to have the building yes. clean the next morning. So then we come in late. Those of us that have to come in can come yeah. in late. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See what time he can get here and clean the mm -hmm. next morning. I mean, if you guys had to get in your office, you could right. at least stay over here. Been, <laughs> yeah. right. but, but anyway, so that's what I was trying to do is at least keep it, you know, um, yep. one hallway. Um, there'll be it a may, couple It makes stairs. sense to have no mm -hmm. one here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that would be good. <clears throat> yeah, so okay. originally I was do thinking. You, you don't need a vote of the board on no, that, Casey. I don't think so, you just, right. mm -hmm. you know, that's okay. I will redo my, um, okay. my plan. Um, okay. to incorporate some of those changes. Yep. Um, but I thought it would be just good to kind of have it, no, you know, excellent. in a... It's very good, very well detailed out. Yeah, Looks the good. plan of operation. I don't know if there's anything else we need to talk about with regard to that. Um, I don't think I so. Think Again, we will just encourage people highly to mail in. So and what what we need to do? Um, you have your recommendations here. The reverse nine one one. That was my, uh, mm -hmm. what was I was concerned about. Is that we mm -hmm. make sure we get a robocall out yep. mm -hmm. for the um, election and yep. yeah, and then reminder of town meeting and maybe, first. And then we have sandwich boards. Out yeah, that thing. Yep. And and also at and the, the transfer station, one. right? The mm -hmm. electronic one here in yep. downtown. And then we can put the sandwich board one at the okay. transfer station. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we should say that if there's anybody that is going to give out be, information at the transfer station, there is be no tables, no contact, just... Right. If you want to stand with a sign, yep, you have away to be from everybody, social distancing. You cannot be near mm -hmm. other people, but if you're going to have... I mean, you want to get your name out that you're obviously running, other mm -hmm. than social media... Yeah, you cannot be going up to people at a transfer station. And you station. have to you have... There's no question you have to have a mask, even yeah. though... I mean, it's it's just there's too many it's people. It's mainly just to be visible. Yeah. No interaction mm -hmm. with people. Just right. visible. Yeah. That's it. I, I think I think we need to have make sure we have um, guidelines on that mm -hmm. and and have somebody check a couple times during not us but you mm -hmm. know maybe the police check or something yep. just to drive by and make sure there's no issues. Right. We don't um, want people going up to people that tell, so, talk about so, their their slate of okay. plans. Okay. So, yeah. so, right. So we'll put this on FCAT in the town mm -hmm. um, website, and yeah. you'll try to get an and article you, in the newspaper. And yeah. you would have that, um, would you have that in digital form, the mm -hmm. vote thing that I could maybe put on a Facebook page or mm -hmm. something? Yeah. A message. Yeah, it. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. That'd be yeah. perfect. Oh, that would be, yeah. Um, this thing? Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. You have the back one? because I, I don't just, know. I think you just gave me the front one. I, don't I did, I had because I, I hadn't. Yeah. Kind of okay. customize so the back. I will. And we'll yep. throw it up. Yeah. That'd be we're great. So on, uh, um, the only thing that uh, I think we really need to advertise that, you know, there's no other, uh, no, no other offices are here. So right. Right. the only thing that's happening is voting. So we don't have people wandering in wanting to see the mm -hmm. building department right. or complain to the selectmen or something because right. we've been closed mm -hmm. for, you know, this yeah. whole time. That's what I wanted we to want to make it clear the that there was yep. no yep. other yep. offices open. Yep. Right. Um, right. That including would be my ours. concern. Yep. <laughs> yeah, including yours. I'll have yes. the, the, yeah. the workers in that. Down that. here, probably, yep. Yep. yeah. Yep. I mean, this is, I, I know people... The, the thing is, the virus has, we've been so successful in mm -hmm. keeping, you know, everyone healthy because people have been really staying home and our offices have been locked down here. But all our employees have really made a personal effort to, to limit their exposure. They've been able to work this entire time without being sick. And we just, you know, this is essential business of the mm -hmm. town. We, ha we have to keep our, our employees healthy um, yep. just to keep job. going. So, yeah, I, I don't want people to think that we're awful, but it's just we are going to be awful about this. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. nothing. We're going to keep I, it down. With all of that in mind, once I get a final version of my election day yeah. plan, okay. maybe you guys can, you know, review it maybe next meeting. Um, sure. Kind of make sure. And we'll put that on the website so people That'd can kind of know yes. yeah. this is yes. what's happening and not happening. Right. Absolutely. No, I yep. think that makes a lot of yeah. sense. Yeah. That'd be great. 
Mm. Yeah, that, I can't thank you enough for all your work on this. You've been uh, Barbara, really good. Really, this really is hundred percent thorough. This is it is. really yeah, uh, it's really good yeah. work. Uh, thank you for well, doing like, so much research, and yeah. I, and even to the last minute, things have been changing. <laughs> I know. I, Not in your favor, even, but I still. Mean, it, is, it is my earnest desire that everyone does get a chance to vote. Absolutely. So I don't want any confusion. Right. I want people to understand what the Safely. plan is. Safely. And how can they go right. about yes. um, doing it without it being hectic or, you know, misunderstood. Yeah. You so don't hopefully. have to come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, no. It, great. Yeah. It's great. But thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. Because it's yeah. very clear. So that's wonderful. Yep. I'll, um, I'll get a final version so we can... So you guys can look it over mm -hmm. and approve it, perhaps, and we'll put it on the website. Anything Great. else you want to address? Or you um, I just wanted to circle back around to, um, we had talked about the sewer commitment, and I was yes. worried, but it sounds like they're on target. For I talked their to Sarah things. today, yep, yeah. she mentioned oh, that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. yeah, they hope to be on target with the information so we can move forward with the setting yeah. of the sewer. So if you guys are doing an every other week um, rotation of meetings, I would hope to have it the very first, I think the first Wednesday of June you meet, if yes. I did my every other correctly. Yep. So hopefully at the latest. Uh, yeah, the 3rd of June. Yep. The 3rd, yeah. Yep. So what do you want on the agenda? Uh, to uh, just the to um, uh, issue the sewer commitment. Sewer commitment. Yeah. yeah. So, I'll get, I mean, if we get the water readings before that, we can do it. Right. Then the time before but we don't usually get them and that's not setting a rate it's just the it's not. It's just the rate's already set yeah. it's the, just the commitment mm -hmm. yep 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 we talked about um delaying you know pursuing dog licenses and doing transfer station stickers in yep. august so yep that seems I to be working that, well i don't have anything else i don't think great no that's good thank oh. you so much yeah. if you can think of anything else that we've not addressed because pretty much what we want to do i mean we've collected the revenues right. for this this coming act budget and mm -hmm. we have a budget so we, what we want to do is not really have any decisions or activity through the summer right and then start making some decisions in the fall and mm -hmm. so if you can think of anything else that we might have missed barbara yeah um uh, you know so well. people are aware of it and mm -hmm. Um, I think, you know, we've put everything off until yeah. uh, and you know, staggered August things, or so. Which is a good thing, instead yeah. of having a bunch of things due by July 1st. Right. And, yeah. You know, I, I'm just a little worried about the tax rate setting process for the year. But right. I mean, well, we talked about an anticipated tax, is that right? Or uh, Oh, preliminary. Preliminary? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that would be something you'd ask the assessors about. Right, right. Yeah. We were going to maybe do that, right? Yeah. I know... Um, DOR had recommended that yep. they recommended it. towns that have so actual consider it. So maybe we can get that on the agenda just to ask them again. I know we talked they about They haven't that met time. much, but I can ask Karen. Right. Tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe their next meeting or whatever, if they could come in or just mm -hmm. start having that discussion. I, I, to I, think in the, I think in the next six to eight weeks, we're going to get a lot more of these we are. fiscal mm -hmm. decisions. Right. I, you right. know, everything right now is so up in the air. Yeah. It's, yep. it's not really worth spending a lot of time making decisions because it changes. Right. It changes well, I think it's wise day. that we, you know, get our annual town meeting in, get the budget mm -hmm. done. Yep. Because I think a lot of towns did postpone and they're going to, you know, limp along with those budgets that go well, every month. month at a time. And I just don't know no. what DOR is going to look like in the fall trying to figure right. out tax rates for all of that going yeah. on and yeah um, so Limited everybody capacity. might be on the late side yeah they'll be all with us because we're always on the right late side. right no so, if we yeah. can do it early that'd be yeah, great that's, just get that, moving ahead of time all i was thinking is, well i think I, I think by us we're going to be one of the few towns that actually has a budget right so i think well, because I think a lot, yeah uh, no, a lot of towns are doing that one twelfth thing, Are which they? is going to be horrible. I think the our area is going to try to have their budgets. Yeah, there. I think the bigger cities are are doing. One. I heard somebody was doing like a three month delay. Oh my God. I know, <laughs> I know. I've seen three of them actually. I know. Yeah. So wow. so I think we're going to be energy. okay, as mm -hmm. far as trying to get in line for stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we'll. Yeah, I mean that's so. part of our advantage is that we are pretty flexible. Mm. And as soon as we get information, we we can make start making. Decisions. Well, you know, we are dependent on um, the assessors Patriot getting their stuff, Patriot and getting their done, other right? things that lead to and DOR. Is, is this and our if, is this our um, recertification year or not? No, I don't. Oh, thank God. Think so. 
Yeah, thank God. No. Mm. I didn't even think about that. So, you know, if they're not out right. doing, doing, you know, if anything leads to a, a delay more than we normally have, then. Right. No, yeah. we should get, we should talk about getting, getting that going earlier if they're, if they're open to that. Right. I would highly encourage them to be. Right. Again, we're just kind of thinking outside yeah. the box of, you know, we don't want to get caught. different than we normally do just mm -hmm. to, you know, yeah. get it done. Yeah, err on mm -hmm. the side of safety there, yeah. caution. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other yeah. questions or anything? We're good with that. Thank you so much for coming in. Okay. Thank you thank for you. all you do every day. Thanks. And thank your you, team. Barbara. That okay. Was really, I feel you know, really good about it. People have to realize that everything we're doing right now is so abnormal. Oh, and there's so many balls true. up in the air right now. Mm -hmm. um, and quite frankly, it's very difficult running yeah. a, a town government right now. Right. Because you really don't know what's going on. Um, you know, we don't have the full interaction with people that we normally have because you can't have them for health reasons. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, it's just a crisis that nobody would have anticipated. No. And, you know, I think, you know, you know, you're doing an excellent job in what you're doing to keep Thank things you. going the way you should. Um, you know, I'm glad that we have a full staff in our office now yes. to keep things right. going. Oh, right. my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just, you know, uh -huh. it's just. The timing couldn't have been better. It really is. Fortunately, you know, we've got a lot of dominoes in the right spot. Right. Before this happened. Right. We've, yeah. we've really left out right now. The last domino actually got in the spot, I think, maybe just two or three days before. <laughs> yes, that week. The crap hit the fan. Yes, right. Jen yeah. started that week. Um, <laughs> we're there. We're trying our best. Right. Is it going to be perfect? No. Right. We all know that. And it's unfortunate that it's not perfect. But you can't hold us to a standard that right. we have to constantly be changing every week. Yeah. And sometimes every day. Right. The amount of information... That comes it, it would to normally me be every day, yeah. ten oh, years, every yeah. day, as they you know it's propose amazing. a new change and then different all the iterations of that change, and then ultimately and it's it's it comes to be, and then you sift through it and how to implement it, and and while you're implementing it, the new change is being talked about, yeah. and I have to crazy. say I'm more exhausted, yeah, or I feel like I've we've Just worked more. Your email? than we've ever had to work. Oh, Just to yeah. I mean, to do start, we start a regular thing. in the yeah. morning. Yeah. You have to get on the computer before 7 a.m. just to make sure you're, you you're got all your anything. questions right. ready for 8, 9 o'clock. Yeah. And then by the end of the day, things have changed. Yeah. And, and this is after two or more conference calls. And the conference calls are exhausting because you can't see people. Right. Mm -hmm. and it, yeah, you have to listen to voices instead of looking at body language. I I think that's, that's hard for it is really that is hard. Really, really, hard. really exhausting. It is and 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 even even know. within the uh, yeah. town offices here, we don't I, see each other. We I, I mean I don't go over to her well, office, so I have to call her or. <laughs> Yep. And, it, and, you know, if you can't see my hands, I don't know how you're going to understand what I'm we saying. We don't know what you're That's saying. That's right. right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it is. I think it's, a, it's, it's extremely hard. But yeah. I, I really appreciate what everyone staff. is doing. Very proud. Yeah. I am. And, you I know, am. all yeah. our committees are doing remote meetings. Yep. Um, right. And, you know. If you're having any difficulty with the remote meetings, make sure that you get a hold of we're working on it. Uh, either Casey or Jennifer right. uh, to make sure that we're getting it straight. Um, because you know, unfortunately, these meetings still have to go. Right. Yep. We can't open town hall for it, unfortunately, because we have to sanitize the place after every meeting. Right. And it's just you know we have very restricted personnel within the office, and we have to keep it that way. Yeah. Mm. As much as I hate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because right, sure. you know, I don't like talking to people where I can't read their body language exactly. and look at them and right. figure out, you know, because to me, sometimes their body is telling me something different than what they're actually saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's difficult, and it's very difficult for me. Yeah, and it's just no, you know. I think that's true of just about everyone. Yeah. I will say that the um, I think most people do know that we have a drop box now. Yes, um, we had it for the tail end of collecting the real estate, but uh. Uh, I think people are utilizing it for other things, so yeah, that's Great. fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, bring it in. It, bring yeah, it in. Pop it in the so yeah. if you have okay. something, we have a Dropbox right in the foyer. 
yeah. um, and we check it um, regularly, a couple times a day. Um, so, yeah. yeah, make sure it's in an envelope, no cash. But other than that, um, I've seen things for other departments in there, so people are hearing about it. And um, yeah. again, we're finding new ways to just get everything done. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have uh, we have worked. I know Casey and um, Jen had worked really hard. We're we're trying to get through this, understanding how to have a how meeting, this is, how these are working, how these boards can communicate easier. Yeah. There are you know. There are, um, I've had some frustration because I, I have been on the other meetings that seem really easy to put together. Right. And you're like, oh, well, you could just jump on this, it's free, and you know, 10 people can get together and collaborate really easily. But as I'm learning from Jen and Casey, it's, um, there's different requirements when you have hearings or town meetings where mm -hmm. you need, maybe need to have 300 people. Right. They probably won't join, but they need that ability to join. So you can't limit how many people can join and diff and these different programs only let you have so many people in like zoom for free you can only have um 40 participants for like 40 minutes or something and right. we need you know our meetings last hours and um so it's mm -hmm. very expensive and we're looking to find the most um flexible easiest system so that we can educate and train the say, finance committee or planning boards to be able to use the meetings well and be able to take good interaction and share screens so we can see data right, and understand in, in the hearing, items. When you have a hearing situation, you have to be able to yeah. present the information. And we hope this would let up. We hope this on the On change. May 18th, we could go like this and everybody could come back in again. I doubt that's going to happen because we have happen. no vaccine and we have no testing. So right. until you have some way to protect everybody, you, you've got to kind of roll in this new world and it's frustrating mm -hmm. but we're here to help if people want to learn how to do a, a meeting just call us we will spend immense amount of times getting people familiar with how to turn stuff on how to sign on how to ask questions we'll do practice meetings so that people are feel comfortable and, we've done and they can continue their mm -hmm. business without right. feeling like they're they yeah, don't have it one do step at a time and, and ultimately you get used to it you and do you do the next thing you do yeah. Yeah. yeah yep so I think it's um yeah it's a bit of a challenge but we're here to help any way we can to do that and I know it is frustrating for a lot of people I've seen the feedback it's it's hard I, I you know right we don't we are truly not overreacting I know that is um, that is the impression I think some people have which is understandable mm -hmm. but I'd rather overreact than underreact um, and, and knowing that it could end. I'm, here I am burning up behind this mask today. I uh, just, you know, it's not comfortable. I want to take a breath and I keep getting this stuck in my mouth. So right. it's not fun to do, but um, we're just doing whatever we can because I value and care about our employees so much that I do not want anything to happen to them and we need to keep moving. So um, it'll be frustrating, but we'll, we'll get through it together and we'll be mm -hmm. back meeting and yeah, jousting right. with each other in person and <laughs> before right. you know it. And I think too just because the rest of society is also doing this this mm -hmm. isn't a municipal government thing right. so you know people are understanding I mean they can't go to you know shopping and they right. can't do this and they can't so, so they yeah they you know anticipate yep. that kind of answer when they yep. call so I, I haven't felt a lot of um you know, kind of we've had a couple. frustration yeah. from too many people yep. on the phone. They yeah. realize that, you know, that I it's mean, a tough time. we're trying to work through marriage intentions, business certificates. Yes. I mean, all of these things that we normally do face to face. So right. it's been interesting. Yeah, I it's bet. It's been very interesting. I bet. Well, we'll get through it. Did and again, we're here to help. If people need help understanding how they can hold a meeting, meeting let's anyway? do that no, together. You guys have so. yeah. you guys, we need to come up with a plan first. Okay. 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 Thank you, Barbara. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Have, have a great you. night. I'll send the warrant out tomorrow after they talk about it. Okay, yeah, and I'll get it posted. Yeah. Okay. okay, good to see you. Thank you again. Um, so Chris Curtis was uh, going to be our next um, um, uh, attendee and, and <laughs> presenter. Uh, is Chris on? Are you with us, Chris? Yeah, yes, I am. Oh, how are you? Good evening. Hi, Chris. Good evening. So uh, this was um, a consideration of appointment of a green infrastructure policy committee and discussing the MVP updates. Um, so I know, um, well, and thank you for uh, helping with that bit of press release and we were really excited to pass the, the green infrastructure, infrastructure policy. Um, there was really good feedback from that. And, um, and your suggestion w was really, was great to, 
to kind of put together a, a committee to help, you know, guide that and oversee that a bit. Um, so I'll let you, if you want to speak on that a little bit and bring everyone up to speed on your idea, that'd be great. Sure, thank you. Um, so yeah, congratulations on adopting that policy. I think it's really exciting. And now that the policy, um, I was just trying to think about how we could move forward in a proactive way um, and coordinate amongst town officials and you know, maybe look at things like grant opportunities that could help to implement the policy that we have. And um, it seemed like it made sense to have some sort of a, of a, of a working group to um, help coordinate that. In thinking about the composition of it, um, I realized that we have already got an MVP core group established that has many of the um, same people on it that would make sense for a green infrastructure committee. So it may make sense to consider, you know, just um, expanding the role of and, and perhaps renaming that group to include it, uh, include the green infrastructure work into its uh, mission. Mm -hmm. um, actually, so, actually, Chris, I, that's what I was going to suggest because um, just because it doesn't make sense to have two separate meetings for the core group. For the, and yeah, they're have, all addressing that same kind of infrastructure, right? And right? then have this separate group, only only because, you know, it's just so many meetings. I mean, right, and they're addressing sim very similar things. I mean, the right. projects that we'd be working on. You, you could know, just review it in the in the process of our regular core group meetings. Mm -hmm. And so, just help me with the makeup of that group right now. There's a select board rep, which I, I know you've been very involved with. Uh, well, the, uh, yeah, I'm on the core group. Yeah. But. So and then so that would be one. Casey obviously is our is our town administrator. Uh, Kevin Scarborough is you know obviously DPW head. Um, and then you, these were some other suggestions, but um, uh, um, Lori Basada. Um, she's been on it. She has been working, and she's uh, on yeah. the energy group. Um, M. A. Swedland or another rep from the energy committee. Um, Tim Hilchey, you know, he's been in, he's on the conservation commission. Um, we need a planning board rep, a building department rep, and um, John, John Pachurik, you know, might, he has a lot of insight on what we're doing in town with this, this kind of stuff. But we've had um, who else Rachel, is? Rachel Blaine has been um, yep. on the core group. Um, Dick and uh, uh, Bob have been on and off coming to the core group. And then um, um, Tim has, is part of the core group mm -hmm. as a conservation Commission member. So, and then actually, board rep. who who are we missing, Chris? Who are we missing in the core group? Oh. Um, I, I think uh, I think um, a formal representative on the Energy Committee, um, like M. A. Swedland, would be a good choice. That uh, mm -hmm. Lori Basada is on the Energy Committee, but she's had a hard time coming to our meetings yep. because yeah. they are during, during the, the day. day. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the planning um, and rep the building is building Rachel. Department. Rachel has, she participated on and off. She yep. hasn't been able to come to a lot of the meetings lately, but yeah. she she came to the first year or so meetings. Well, maybe they could discuss between yeah. their board yeah. who they'd want, you know. I think we put the invite out to them. Yeah, to just say yeah. anybody interested in this. I mm -hmm. mean, maybe Aunt Mary might be interested or something like yeah. that. Um, I mean, obviously we want as many participants as yeah. possible. Yeah. And, and Dave, this is not to keep you from coming um, uh, either. Uh, I know because yeah, Trevor, I mean, you've come to a couple. I've seen a couple, but I really, I mean, it's been in your wheelhouse, but I, I you know, I'm offered to help or be involved wherever I can, but I. Yeah. Well, I don't it's mostly. Other things to do. I have other things to do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's mostly it's mostly to spread out some of the work. Yep. Because, um, you know, yeah. just like I come to some of the uh, sewer treatment plant work. Yes, but exactly. You've yep. been a lead on that. It's just, I mean, there's just too much work, there's too much money. There's a lot. It's amazing. Um, speaking of which, Chris, not to change the subject, but um, so we did get an extension on our MVP projects. That's the next letter. Yeah. Uh, we haven't formally gotten an extension yet, but we have gotten an email indicating that an extension will be approved at some point. In the near future, I know that Joe. So I'm been been working on that. Yeah. We stayed um, contact on that, and I've submitted a formal uh, set of paperwork, and um, I'm about to tell him for each specific project 
what we need an extension, um, what date we need an extension to. Okay. Um, so I was going to update you all on all of those projects uh, okay. once we get um, past the green infrastructure issue. Okay. So um, just do we want to uh, circle back to this on the next meeting with a recommendation of names, or, do you, or should we just um, make a motion to form this group? Um, but I don't really know if we have I, the language I, I think really set right now on who, which. I, I was just going to say, why don't we say that yeah, we are going to um, clarify the charge for the core group yeah. and add, formally add an energy committee person. Yeah. Because it makes sense. I think so, too. Yeah. Um, so why don't we work yeah. on that? I mean, even though Lori has been coming off and on and she has been involved and she isn't on the energy committee, it would have them discuss it yeah see. same as the planning board rachel right. has been say. involved yeah but, let but them maybe choose who let's may see want to right. step up so yeah. maybe what you say is the select board is considering this considering yes. transitioning the core group to this policy group um, or no incorporating the policy group into the core group well because the core group core, core group decides what your projects we rec bring the recommendations so to the So the policy board. and the core group do go together. Yes. yes. You just turn the name yeah, turn the exactly. name into the policy group mm -hmm. because you can Wordsmith. you can set policy and approach things if you're mm -hmm. a But policy the core group. but the core group oversees so the, the policy group. That's what I mean. Yeah. They fit okay. together. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Yeah. However, I you mean want it's to do literally it. a transition oh. of function and opening up like yeah. Chris said, expanding that chart. Because what extent. the problem is, once we get on a, f a regular funding cycle, when there's a actual funding, then it will be fine. But every yeah. now, it's just whenever the governor has Half money, yeah. it's it's we gotta we gotta get together and figure out what we're gonna do. So that's really what the core group has been doing: is just getting together and come up with, work with Chris to come up with some ideas that we then recommend to the select board. But well, this sounds like it'd be a more formalized thing. Yes. So yes. Maybe you work a bit on the charge. Yeah, and I think. That, yeah, let's do this I, the I next so. couple we, weeks. We, kind of get that together and bring it back. We push that out to the committees that you guys have discussed and say, "Hey, this is coming. Mm -hmm. Please, please keep an eye on it." I agree. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense, Chris? Yes. Sure. Great. I think let's do that. Okay. Um, so then, moving on on, on the other. Um, any other updates you were you were talking about you wanted to uh, so Chris can you update us on the Kelleher Drive in particular yeah yeah so uh, for our fiscal 20 MVP grant which is fourth one um, that we've gotten that's the one that the extension has been um, offered by uh, you know based on the governor's office's decision yep and uh, I expect that we'll get a um, an extension of six to twelve months, uh, and so Kelleher Drive, um, we did uh, complete the bidding process. There were, I believe, six bids submitted. High and Bond is going through a process of reviewing the low bidder at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I think they have some questions about the low bidder and their ability to complete the work. So. Um, they want to set up a conference call and uh, discuss that with, with some of the town officials involved. Okay. And make a decision, a clear decision about that. Yeah. Um, there, there were three uh, bids that were uh, within the grant amount that we had. So there, there is an alternative okay. to select perhaps not the lowest bidder, but um, the, most, the most qualified low bidder. Okay. So do you see this so that's where, do you see this as um, uh, getting done uh, July and August still? Um, that's the that's the Mill Village culvert um, that is, is going to be done. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Kelleher Drive, the time frame for that, they're looking at um, probably completion by the end of October um, at this point. I'm just getting that's really it. nervous about the weather. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's like the longest time that okay. they would imagine doing it. There's oh, still some permitting issues to try yeah. to get. I know. We have to keep working there. on that. Yeah. All okay. right. You know. Who, who um, is it still the Army Corps that we're worried about, Chris? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's I, there's some, some wetlands permitting, too. 
Okay. Yep. We, I just haven't had time to follow through, so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll try to sort through that. Because um, I, I would really like to see this done by August and September, only because the low water um, is usually August. And, and right. uh, then once we hit September, Right. We we start getting rain, you know, like mid September ish, and um, that whole area is just a mess. Yeah, and I, and I think we have every intention to try to try to meet that target. Um, just mean, in terms of work the state on on extending the contract, we're going to try to extend it into you know like November first, just to be on the safe side. Oh, I can but see. Hopefully the, yeah, but or that I okay. want to get in and out. If we can, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you. So, um, well, let's some of the other, um, the Please. Mill Village culvert. We'll have to follow up. On um, that. They back the construction about three weeks on that, so it would be starting. The starting date would be towards the end of May. Okay. And done by the. Um, but that's done by what? Like, I'm sorry, you cut out there a sec. Done by when? It's about a week. Uh, done by the end of June. Oh, okay. So, yep. so they are they are actually only there for about a week. Chris, is that correct? Of you know, putting um, in the. I think it could be a little bit longer than a week, but it's it's not it's not terribly much more than that. Okay, so um, and th and and that you feel can get done by the June thirtieth deadline. Um, yeah, that one is in that that project's in our fiscal. 19 contract, so it does still need to be done by June 30th, and they, and yeah. they expect to be able to do that. Okay. I just want to make sure we keep an eye on that. Yep. Yeah. Um, the green infrastructure construction uh, also went out to bid, and there were no bids on that project, um, oh. and we felt that, the engineer felt that the reason was that uh, the precast concrete companies that would have to um, create the tree box filters felt the time frame was too short to be able to realistically meet that. Okay. So the fact that we now need to get an extension um, should allow us to rebid that project and hopefully successfully rebid it. Okay. So we're trying to push ahead with that. Okay. Um, that would happen still summer, we hope. All right. Um, um, I've been also working away at a flood evacuation for historic deer that is nearly complete. And um, once I have that ready, I'm going to share that with um, our flood evacuation planning committee, which Carolyn sits on. Yep. Um, and uh, we are sharing that with the board as well. And then I guess the other update I have is that looking a bit on uh, the prep of location with uh, various partners or potential partners. Can you can you repeat uh, that, Chris? Because you, you you're breaking up. We're missing about every other word. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. No, it's just technology. Um, I'm, re I'm referring to the fifth round grant application for MVP, and I have been working on that and discussing the different tasks that uh, we are considering with various project partners or partners. Okay. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. So last meeting we discussed there were six potential uh, tasks in the new grant. Quickly kind of run through those with you again and tell you where we are uh, with some of them and just uh, get some uh, guidance and, and validation that these, these are tasks that I should be proceeding with. Um, so beginning with um, the Wapping Road um, Stream Restoration Project, I guess I'm going to call it. Yep. Uh, uh, with Ty and Bond about that. And the um, suggestion there is that in, in this next round we do um, engineering design and permitting or basically it's a stream restoration and wetland restoration project. And, uh, ballpark kind of cost estimate for that would be in the neighborhood of $100,000. Um, 
and that's we probably all we can do in this grant because the permitting um, process is going to be pretty long detailed and there yep. probably about a year worth of permitting yep um, so would apply for construction then hypothetically in in, the, in, in a future round right but I'm, I want to give you kind of ballpark costs for each of these so again just to run these by you and make sure that um, we're on the right track yeah my, so my only concern yeah and go and you can go ahead I don't well, mean to interrupt before I'm just... we um, move on from Wapping Road do you think that our match that we've already done um, with tie and bond would be the match because we we've done about twenty thousand dollars in um, pre-engineering already. Yeah. Uh, good question. I will try the answer to that. I, it's my, a question of timing, I think. And my major concern, I guess you know, is I guess always with this program is our matches and our money. I know that you know probably way of bringing that up too. As I. I foresee 2022 is a really tough year um, budget wise and I'm very concerned you know as much as we want to ta tackle all these programs and stuff we're we're going to be in a world of hurt for money um, 2021 is going to be hard but I think 2022 is just going to be really difficult and um, so I'm, I'm so it makes sense to look at these but I but I just um, I am a little bit nervous about our exposure as far as uh, I'm, I'm actually really agreeing, uh, um, Chris, with with Trevor on this because, you know, based on our experience with the financial crisis, it wasn't this, you know, the year that it was happening. Like this year is, from, you know, we have to worry about some stuff, but it's really the following year, 2022, that's going to be really hard. So, um, but on the other hand, one of the problems where we didn't have shovel, shovel ready. ready projects, yeah, I and know. I and I, I think. It. If you are very careful, you can talk with Zach, but we've done $20,000 worth of engineering already, and, and this ties into Mill Village. So we have a very, very good story mm -hmm. to, to get the next round, but we also sh are showing that we've already done the match, and Zach's work uh, of that 20000 he could incorporate that into the actual engineering so that would be work that we've already paid for. Yeah. So if you could talk with him. Just get a feeling, I guess. Uh, yeah, because that's more, that would be enough of a match. Yeah. Um, and if that doesn't work, then maybe we can work with the conservation district, the Franklin Conservation District, with um, some of, you know, water quality, you know, programs. Oh. Or, or we can get a 319 maybe from... Uh, you know, from the D DEP mm -hmm. as a match instead of using our money. That's my only concern is just I know. we're going to be in a Because the problem is DEP money is actually, it's fed, federal money, but, um, you know, the state, it goes through the state, so it's kind of laundered and it's considered state money. So that might, a 319 might not be, you know, match money because it would be state to state mm -hmm. instead of federal. But. Yeah. Conservation, the Conser Franklin Conservation District is federal money. So we might be able to use that as a match. I mean, because it's farmland. We're so, doing reclamation of farmland. You're doing river restoration, but it's also reclamation of farmland. So there, there, sh there should be something that we can do that will you know, make us not have to pay our match. We either have done it, right. or else we can get some other pot of money somewhere That's else. That's the key. I just want to make sure we yeah. don't overextend ourselves and say we're rolling forward with this thing, and then we wind up with no way to pay for it, and we got to yeah. pay for it. So, yeah. That's all. It's just kind of my my nervousness about this whole thing. I know. Well, we have so many projects. We do have a lot going on. <sighs> we got a lot, lot going on. And a lot on. we want to still tackle. I know. So I just don't want to keep jumping in. But I know it's as important. And we, I mean, it's, we're starting at Mill Village and we're, we're working our way up the hill there and across five and 10. And it's important we, to do. And, and, I just I trying know. to think of spacing it out so we can afford it. Yep. But we also might, this also might qualify for the federal hazardous, mitig our hazardous mitigation plan is done. So um, we could get hazardous mitigation money out of this too, Chris, if we had to. We could apply, um, you know, another grant for that. Okay. okay. Sorry to so, steer you um, around there. 
Yeah, I, I hear you, yeah. um, and and that's why I'm bringing up all of these projects, and I have cost estimates on some of them for okay. you. I want to just kind of sure get a reality yeah. check on okay. whether or not I should be proceeding. Yep. But I I think uh, I think your idea about using the the uh, tie and bond work that is ongoing now is the best of of those ideas, and okay. especially if we haven't paid them yet. I think the most important thing is probably that match money has to be expended during the yeah, right. um, contract period. Okay. So um, if we can find a way to, to do that, and we'll basically roll tie and bonds existing scope of work into the new grant and um, include that as part of the project, um, I think we can make that work. Okay. So you'll check that out. All right, and you said that overall is about a hundred thousand, you know, for the project. Yeah, ballpark. Yeah, ballpark. So, so the match is roughly twenty-five thousand. Yeah, it's a twenty-five percent. Okay. Um, so then we have the two green parking lots, um, and again, I have very, very preliminary ballpark estimates from Ty and Bond. Yep. Um, it's beginning that design work, as you know, and we have a meeting tomorrow about that. But um, I wanted to get a a sense, and so uh, for the Leary lot, based on um, a lot size of 60 spaces and 24,000 square feet, ballpark construction cost would be about $300,000 for that. Um, so the match amount, if um, if we decided to pursue that, would be 75,000 for the town. Okay, and then. For the second green parking lot, the Frontier High School green parking lot, based on 175 spaces and um, 85,000 square feet, ballpark estimate is $700,000 for that lot, and the Frontier match would be $175,000. I, I did uh, run that by Darius Modesto um, today. Yep. The, the and he is um, in favor of going forward with with that. Comp but the uh, the Leary lot is the one um, that I guess you would need to, yeah. you know, give your blessing to. Did did I give you um, enough information on that job in North Ham in North Adams that I went by? I can't remember if I replied back to your email with the location and stuff. I think it's like some um, um, steel work or something. I forget what it was. Uh, Great gray work, I think it was gray lock or gray work or something. I could take you there. Yeah, you, did, you didn't. You didn't mention the name of it, um, Trevor. But I did um, kind of run the project generally by um, our engineer at Tyne Bond. Yep. And he was somewhat familiar with it. He said it was a um, project that um, was a mass works project. Yes. That, uh, fortunately, ran over budget and they never finished it. Correct. Um, so yep. I think the business went under. Yeah. Uh, trying to get a little more information about that and yeah. probably help more. They're finishing it up right now. I knew they were planting plants and stuff when I drove by. And you're right, it's been it's been under work for a long time. It was an old mill building. I've got what they used to make, but now there's architects' offices in there and performance space, and it's just a huge open mill space, a couple of stories and a beautiful old building. But um, there is a lot of work to do over the years there. Um, but but the lot was was when I drove by, I thought, oh my goodness! So I pulled in, and you could see, you know, all the spaces where the water would go down in, and um, and you know the pavers allowed it to contour, and um, it, it was amazing. I mean, they had even steel kind of curb, literally steel curb. It was it was pretty wild. So, uh, but a neat, really neat project, and they had all these kind of green spaces too for collecting water and and all that. But yeah, really. I don't know who did the work, but it was it was beautiful, and uh, look 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 really nice. It, it did look really beautiful, and I think it was kind of the Cadillac of uh, green parking lots. Yes, um, I'm not sure what the cost is for that, but I think Alex is going to look into that for yeah. us. Yeah, and, and maybe we just incorporate some of those features. You know what I mean? Where we could where we could right. make it work worthwhile, but still keep the cost down and you know, traditional parking in other spots or paving in other spots. So, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Great. So, so what are your thoughts about the Leary lot, um, given the budget situation? Do, do you yeah. want to um, proceed? 
I think it's an application think it's for that. Yes. yes. No, I think I think for sure if we can if we could you know so you're thinking the construction of that is a, is roughly three hundred thousand and our our cost is about seventy five. I'm all for it. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I, f I yeah. feel like, Chris, I feel like in the first year or two, we'd get, we'd get that back just yes. in the sense of economic oh. uh, activity downtown. I and everyone will be so thrilled because it will be beautiful. Mm -hmm. And instead Park of Lake. this, yep. just a dead, no, literally I'm, dead lot. I'm all for that. We, we will have activity. And I, I, I think it will be beautiful. I was just to have those pictures that you sent. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's really nice. um, that would be such an addition to town town. I did, um, I did make contact with one of the business owners there on the end um, and talked to him about getting access there. And he remembers um, that he was before the planning board. So there should be a set of plans somewhere for when that business on the end was going to expand. They bought that extra lot, took down the house, they were planning on doing municipal, you know, or some shared parking and an entrance you were there. on the board when we were talking about that. What's that? Yeah, yeah maybe. Dave oh. was on the board. Oh, okay. So there's a set of plans somewhere, and he doesn't know if he still has them, but he said, you know, the market turned south and he didn't expand, but he does want to go back to it. And I talked to him, and I think he's very open to, you know, working with us on that plan and, and allowing some access there, allowing for some shared parking and um, maybe we flop some property and, we, but I think he's open, but he thought that that was all discussed originally and there is a set of plans somewhere that went before the planning board. So maybe we could look at old minutes or- Dick, send Dick and Yeah, uh, Bob maybe after. find out, you know, where that yeah. might be, if there might be a set of plans floating around somewhere that would have all that on it. Um, but so that, so that was encouraging that, that he is open to that, so. Um, and I told them that our next, you know, when we get a meeting and enough information, we wanted to pull all the, you know, butters in and, and start discussing this a little bit further. Um, so that was great news. That's great. Yeah. Good news. Yeah. Um, so the other four projects that were on my original list are um, much less expensive than the ones we've been talking about. Yeah. Uh, but I. They are important, and I, and I think the reason that we've gotten funded um, so many times under this program is that we submit applications that are pretty comprehensive and have uh, a, a variety of types of projects that are really appealing to the yep. state. Yes. So I want to uh, just tell you about about the rest of them. Okay. Um, thing in for um, continuing to work with the Frontier High School on class programming. And uh, I've been, you know, really establishing a good working relationship with three of the science teachers there and, and with Darius Modesto yep. to kind of work on that. So it would be great to continue that. I think we could do that for, you know, in a ballpark of like $5,000. Um, yeah. So the match would only be like $1,000. Yeah, dollars. We're definitely in favor of that. Continuing to work with the Green Infrastructure Committee. Um, you know, ballpark about maybe eight thousand dollars, so a match of two thousand there. Um, working um, with a uh, regenerative regenerative group on the Healthy Soils Initiative. I talked talked with Keith Salzberg at length today, and we kind of scoped out a project that I think is is modest and reasonable that would meet um, some of Carolyn's goals for. Um, doing some uh, some mapping work and and some work to uh, make recommendations to the town about how to um, manage and protect the the soils that are most important in the community. And I think we could probably do a decent project there for in the neighborhood of fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars. So again, a really modest um, match, you know, of a couple thousand dollars um, for, for that one as well. Uh, so those three are, are, are relatively um, small scale, but I think would really enhance the chances of the application right. altogether to but they're go really, forward. They show diversity, uh, for but sure. It is not just the diversity, though, but it's also long-term commitment into uh, our, our, you know, what we're doing in the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, having some data... And having kids be interested in, in that data mm -hmm. is, is really important. And, that, and that's what we were planning on, like, for the marijuana stuff and 
you know, you, you, we have to have some information on this, you know, what, what we need to do here in town. Mm -hmm. And, and I, the, the thing that with is regenerative um, Keith Zaltzenberg, that, who Chris was talking about, he has the contract with EEOA for the healthy soils across the state. Right. And um, so if we are a partner, yeah. then of course we're going to get funding because mm -hmm. the state's already invested in him. Mm -hmm. and, and he's looking for how to, how to practical, use it practically on the ground. Okay. And so you talk about it and it's just a plan on the shelf. So the state would like to see how it really works in the community. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd like to see how it works because I'm on the state subcommittee for that. And I go to these meetings and, I, you know, it's wonderful ideas, but you can't translate them to the local level. And that was where I was like, you, you know, this is wonderful stuff, but how do you, how do you make it practical? How do, you, how do you bring it to the community? So it's actually, I think it's to the advantage of, Keith to work with us, and so he is providing a huge, huge benefit. But I, 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 I think it will be very rewarding for us in the long term. Yeah. So. Okay. Not, not only that, Carolyn, but um, I, I looked at the RFP for the the next round of our our program here in detail today, and um, it's it's a very complex RFP. It's seventy pages long. And uh, the, the amount of work in the grant is, is significantly more than last time. But what I wanted to say is that the Healthy Soils Initiative is specifically mentioned as, as um, it's now listed as eligible types of projects to be done. I can't uh -huh. believe so really that, really. Wow. Okay. Encouraging. Yeah. Well, see, um, we're cutting edge, Chris. What can yeah. I say? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Did you have so, one more you said, maybe? I'm sorry. I thought. W did you have one more program you were thinking of? I do. Okay. Um, the last one is uh, doing construction of the green infrastructure projects that are being designed in our current grant. There were um, four additional tree box filters, one more rain garden, and uh, a green entryway to the uh, Deerfield Elementary School. Oh, we now those, do that I unfortunately do not have a cost estimate for. Right. The I'm green trying to work with our... Cons um, oh, he cut out again. And unfortunately, our consultant for that project is um, having some pretty serious health issues. Oh, no. Um, oh. And we're a little uh, behind schedule with yeah. getting um, a cost estimate from that. Um, um, our Chris, consultant's the reason going why through some chemotherapy the right now. The reason why I'm really interested in the green entryway to the elementary school is because that's a huge thing of pavement right. right there. And it always gets icy yep. and it's nasty. It used to have trees out front. And it, it would boxes, be but. really nice if there was a way um, that kids could naturally line up, you mm -hmm. know, to design it so you have the kids lining up and, and they feel more safe and, mm -hmm. and, and it's just... More better, structured. Yeah, and it's just a better, teachers. well, it's just a huge and more welcoming impression. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's ugly. It is I mean, an eyesore. But it's also just dangerous. It is. And, it's huge cracks in it. It's a mess. Yeah, and, it, it, and you know, kids, kids don't feel safe because it's a big, wide open asphalt. And all so, that water kind of just, I mean, yeah. we did, they did, Kip, I remember, dug that out and, or, he got the Kip highway guys. To, oh, he did yeah. fixed up they quite did a, a bit huge, of that. They made a huge Im improvement. But still, it still but gets it's icy. still is just icy all yeah. the time, and that's the kind of weather we're getting. And we need some kind of green design that the kids feel safer, but is also safer for kids and and people going back and forth. And then the and then I think again the teachers would love to have more of a structured kind of design so that it was yes. more you know the kids I knew agree where 100%. they were lining up every every day when they got there and. So you know. I know I know that we're it's again it's going to be we're going to be tight on money, but I honestly feel like that's the kind of capital improvement that we should be supporting because there is a huge amount of of benefit back. And, it's, and if we only have to pay twenty five percent of a of the project, my goodness, that's and it's a huge on investment. the cap, it's on the CIPC capital plan already. Yes, to it do is something on our plan. There. So but, it's a couple years out or a year out, but. 
Yeah, so we'd love to, love to, definitely that part of that program for sure. You know, tree boxes, if they had to wait a bit, I'd, that'd be fine with that. You know, but. maybe there's a way um, we can do a donation, um, have a donation account for tree boxes and stuff. I think if, if we get one or two tree boxes in, and get people, started, people are going to see, what they love are. it, yeah. and, they're, and they'll, they'll maybe want to donate, you know, in their name or in the memory of or, you know, we're, I really want to try to get this stuff done before we have our 350th Me because... Too. It just will make the place look so much better. Yep. And, and we'll have a lot of people coming. We'll, we'll be so damn ready for a party, too. Yes, I we mean, will. Oh, God. <laughs> it may take three years before we get there. But. I know. So we're going to have a wicked blowout party. Yep. But it would be really nice to have a much cozier, nice downtown. Yep. So thank you, Chris. Okay. Um, I just want to mention... Yeah. Um, uh, just a follow-up from our lovely climate change day. I mean, it seems like a, a, a lifetime ago, but we had a wonderful climate change day on um, February 29th here, just before we had the pandemic. And one of the things that we were talking about was dragonflies. Um, and the reason why we want to support dragonflies in Deerfield is because they're voracious mosquito eaters. They eat mosquitoes at all stages of um, life from the larvae to adults. They eat more mos mosquitoes than bats. And um, Chapley Gardens had just opened up uh, for the season, and Stacy Chapley um, has a plant list for if you have a dry yard or a wet yard and you to support dragonflies. They have a ton of dragonflies up there and hardly any mosquitoes because of so many dragonflies. And so the whole idea is to plant your yard, work in your yard, and support dragonflies in Deerfield. I have not, I, I have just been too busy. I had meant to order dragonflies. You apparently can order them on the internet, just like ladybugs and stuff like that. So you can buy, Dragonflies. You don't have to wait to attract them, but you should try to do. do you, think the you know, would you them? you need to do as much as you can to attract dragonflies and and to offset the mosquitoes in our area. So anyway, yeah, that's part like of the that climate idea. change is keep keep the dragonflies in Deerfield yeah. effort. I so like thank that. you, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the the MVP grant is due on June eleventh. So I will be um, coming back to you with um, a more specific scope of services and budget, okay. which um, you'll need to endorse and uh, and agree right. to the match on. Uh, so hopefully I'll have that uh, sometime in later later part of May. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for your time tonight and all your work. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. So uh, next item is uh, town meeting election update. These are select board announcements and then uh, we have weather updates. I don't know if that was, um, sun's coming out. Um, so town meeting, do, do we want to discuss that at all? Or do, I mean, we're, we're still rolling ahead for June 1st. We're still rolling ahead for June 1st. Um, Barbara and Dan, Scott Dredge, who's the assistant principal over at Frontier, they're gonna meet and discuss how best they can yep. set things up. I do think there's some good feedback that we could get from um, Chief Pacheric and Chief Smith yep. as it relates to public health and safety protection, not the, and also from um, Board of Health agent. But yep. there were some comments that were made in the EDS yep. weekly meeting that I thought were interesting, so I pushed them out to Dan and Barb and, okay, good. and asked them to start thinking about that because, yep. you know, what Barb has voiced to me, and I don't want to put words in her mouth, but this is how I took it. Um, what Barb voiced to me was concerned about making sure that she's got people filing in in a way that they can be counted and, yep. you know. Right, because everybody's got to sign in. Yep. At the same time, those are opportunities for us to check to make sure that people are properly distanced. Yep. We probably, I did have a brief conversation with Lisa about this, so I'm, I'm curious to see what will come back from that meeting. Okay. And then um, we'll circle back around to you guys with it. The, yep. the main thing is we have to set out some kind of grid so that people, I mean, because people's perception of six feet, this is what we were talking right. about, is very different. Yes, I know. Um, so if, if we have 
identifying stakes cones or, or cones or whatever, some place to mark where every pl person brings their lawn chair yep. and sets it down, then I think we'll be okay. But we can't just let people go and haphazardly set their lawn chairs out because it may have to be more structured than yeah. everyone thinks. It, it will so have I would to like be. to see what they come back okay. with. Yeah. And maybe good. we can get volunteers or something or whatever to, to do that. I well, don't know. The high school's got the equipment to line the baseball fields. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's a good idea, yeah. Dave. Yeah. So it, it, it just, they have to, whatever they find, whatever they decide, or however we put this together, it has to be ADA compliant. Correct. And so they yeah. are making, so it, they're more. very aware yeah. of that. So yeah. we need to make sure that what yeah. that ADA compliance looks like might not be what we're talking about right now. Exactly. Anymore. They'll have to figure it out. So we trust them to do that, that for sure. Yeah. yeah. But that's a good idea, Dave, for sure to line it that way. Um, and I know we've been um, discussing, obviously budget has been a huge um, issue that we keep going around and around on, but we're, um, you know, we're, we're, uh, we've asked for a meeting of the uh, select board Finance yes. Committee and Capital Improvement Planning Committee for the 19th, I believe. 19th. Um, so we can kind of finalize our budget and move that forward to town meeting. Yep. Um, we, we know it's not gonna be perfect. I mean, yeah. that's, that's clear. You know, everybody thinks that we're, we gotta fix this whole deficit in one budget that we have no idea where the numbers are coming from yet, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna put together a very um, conscientious budget for what we have an idea of what may happen, and then we're gonna come back to it in a few months, in the, later in the fall, in the winter, as many times as we need to, to, to readjust if, if we have to going forward, but we want to, um, we want to make sure we ask for and appropriate what we think is correct for the, for the year coming forward, and then we know that, again, 2022 is gonna be very tough, the end of 21 is gonna be hard, so we're, we're, we'll be back at this. You know, the schools are working really hard to try and figure out where they're coming from. Very little information from the state right now. Um, so we've all been a holding pattern. And, you know, we've been looking at this and adjusting it and working on it daily, but we just go around and around in a circle because so we, we're like pinning the tail well, on the donkey. Our budget, 70% of our budget is school related. Right. right. So it's, it's crazy. I mean, but, but Darius has no information. Is so Darius had no information for a long so, time, just like we did. Yeah. And I sent an email out to Capital and Finance Committee and to you all and advised you, like I had done on, in several meetings. The state does not have numbers. They're mm -mm. just beginning to start thinking about and pushing, and I saw it today, pushing comments out. Mm -hmm. It could be that the first and second quarters of 21 are the largest contraction quarters. We don't right. know any of this. Yep. And it's talking heads who, economists yeah. who are doing, Well, know, this is unprecedented, the research, so you yeah. don't but have any don't models have that work. The, yeah. the framework that we're working on, or the framework that we're existing in right now, has been likened to the Great Depression, not even the Great Recession of and, 2008. And it can change in the three Great months, like it, did, like it did change in two months here. It can come you know, it can come back if we get moving again. It really just, there's so many moving targets. We know it's gonna be hurt. You know, it, we, it's we've gonna lost be difficult. a lot of revenue and a lot of tax base um, during what this the time. the local numbers, and, and I, I give Brenda a lot of credit. Yeah. She and I have talked about this a number of times and she's looked at the numbers. Um, her colleagues aren't sharing a lot either because right. there's not much to share. Right. So. We've discussed what we've heard yep. and what we're getting from all those emails that we get every day. And what we'd like to be able to do is, you know, show you what it looks like when we reduce these numbers significantly, yep. mm -hmm. revenues, I mean. Yep. And then show you where we think we could make some further, further um, reductions. But if public sector completely contracts, it's gonna create a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be even worse. Uh, right, you got, you got it. And people would like their services to, to be maintained yeah. at a certain level. We, we don't wanna you know? fix it all in one, one budget. It's gonna take some time it's gonna take to get a back out of this. To get so it. We'll, we'll, we'll do our best it getting forward. It takes two or three years. It does, yeah, it takes it's gonna about take a while. From what, and, oh, from um, what I've read. We're just not gonna go all crazy the first, the first budget. We'll just figure out, you know, be, be conservative. 
um, adjust where we can adjust right. and then take a look at it in two or three months and then take a look at it again in two or three months. And right. then, but we're, you know, we're not going to have the golden answer by June 1st. And neither is are, anybody at the state is. or the federal government. Correct. So we're nobody just going to move forward and then we'll deal with it later on. On, so. on, on the 19th, um, I, I, I never emailed back Jen. I just remembered. That's okay. I, she, if you didn't email, email her, she'll know you, you want to go. Right. No. So the 19th is fine. Okay. It's just that I have a DPH call and then I have a MAPCO meeting that, yep. uh, that I You chair. did email me. Oh, you did, uh, did I? <laughs> yep, you said you had a meeting that ended at 6. And so, oh, I said 6.15 or 6.30 is what I asked, I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, because I'll just call in. We'll, yeah. I'll just, we're just going to be calling in. So, um, you know, so you can do it at 6 because I'll just hang up and then yeah. just dial in a new number. Okay. Although I've never done okay, this great. one before. Pretty straightforward. Yep. The call in part yeah. seems to work most of the time. Okay. Yeah. Unless the pin changes. Right. Okay. Unless the pin changes. Well, yep. I, I will, you will know that I'm available. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you, Jen. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I'm sorry I didn't email you back. I saw it and then I got distracted. No worries. So. I, I'll, I would have caught, caught up with you. <laughs> okay. So I don't really have any more to share on the budget thing other than, you know, we're going to all get together on the 19th and we'll, yeah. we'll do the best we can for the first and then we'll look at it again in the winter, you know, in the fall and the winter and, you know, it'll be, it'll be a rolling discussion and mm -hmm. that's all you can do. I don't, think, I don't know. Um, weather updates? What was that? Was that oh, just? Oh, that was me. Um, oh, that was I'm her. Like, <laughs> listen. <laughs> the sun came out. I know. I the sun came out. It's actually in the 60s tomorrow. Yep. I know. Any other, I know. Any other updates? Well, we're going to have snow after. again. How's the pump coming in? I know. <laughs> I know. We're supposed to have snow. Well, listen. <laughs> the reason why I wanted to just bring this up is because we've been so focused on the COVID stuff that people don't remember that we have serious weather issues and, um, and climate change issues still. And one of the things that is so scary to me is that the Gulf um, of Mexico is, is one of the hot, it's a record warmth. Is it? And all the oceans are record warmth. So we're not gonna have an El Nino year, which means there's like a wind shear kind of thing that dissipates the storms. Every ocean is record warmth. So that means it's a La Nina year. And we're going to have about, they're predicting, predicting I mean, yeah, they're all over the place, but generally the prediction is 20 storms and, the, you know, four of them major. So hmm. people need to still remember we have climate change issues and, and really pay attention to preparing. I know it's so awful, we're all locked down, but just think about, you know, having your last bill, your electric bill, you know, if, if there is storm damage. Um, you know, having a to-go to kit if we had to mm -hmm. evacuate, that kind of stuff. Just the normal hurricane kind of stuff. It's a good, good thought. And also, the flooding. Also the ticks. I know this is a... You know, oh, I know you just, yes. And but ticks. they are everywhere and people are getting... I mean, the they're getting out, they're going for walks, and, the, and they're, they're on everybody. And they're right. on the dogs. They're on, so please, and permethrin, so permethrin. Permethrin, you can get the Bronco horse spray for really cheap. It's now seven ninety nine. It used to be five ninety nine, but, but it you wasn't know that a real will last cold winter. you. That will last you, you know, most of the season. And you just spray your shoes or your pants, and um, it really works. It we keeps a the very, ticks. very mild winter. Yeah, I mean, and the not, ticks are just crazy. They are. I, They're out in force. I, and the nymphs are so tiny. They're yep. like the the tip of the pen here. And, yep. Oh my gosh. And. And it is consistent. A, a, a good third, 36% of our ticks are testing with Lyme. But what is so scary is the co-infections, the yep. uh, uh, bibulosis and yep. uh, anamoblosis and all those things are now fully 10% of our ticks. And that means that you, get you very really, Ill. really, very really Ill. have got to see a doctor. And you've got to know about that extra co-infection. So. Mm -hmm. It is if you get a tick bite, please please, save please it do tick checks and let's checks, test it, and then please send it into UMass. It's for your for your own health, mm -hmm. 
And, and, and it is in our budget for that. to yep. continue um, to, to have the subsidy deal with UMass. And we have been able to, every year we've been able to keep, I don't know this year, but right. every year we've been able to um, leverage a CDC grant to, um, so that we have being able to do testing in the fall and as well as the spring season. We haven't even actually tapped into our money from last year. It will just be tapping into it yep. right now as people are out and about. Um, we use the CDC funding. Um, it's about ready to switch over. Well, a lot more so, people are, are walking and you know yeah. going out in the woods oh, because you're distancing, but that's where you're picking it up. So I please know. just check yourself. Between the GD... It can knock a huge man the down. Ticks and, Bad stuff. Uh, you know, the storms. Oh my gosh. But that stuff hasn't gone away, even though we're dealing with COVID 19. Mm -hmm. So please yep. pay attention. So um, the next item is the COVID 19 updates. I'll just say that um, we are still, luckily, thankfully, in kind of a really good spot still with that. I mean, we're obviously, it's been a nightmare. About 10 cases. But, the, but as far as the illness goes, yeah, we've had maybe 10 um total and there's still you know some that are dealing with that there are you know others have have improved and are, are are back um on their feet again but others are still you know being quarantined and taken care of and we're you know lisa uh, white our our town nurse has been doing a an amazing job with um with her her co-nurses to you know, she covers 14 towns but she's um she's they've been doing a great job of tracing and keeping up on this and um trying to you know, make sure people are safe. And please, you know, if you if you find that you you are, um, you know, you do you do wind up with the with the COVID nineteen, you know, and you need help, please reach out to us, and we can you know we can find help in the community. We can get food to you. We can make sure you stay home, and you know that you have what you need. Um, there, there's a community of people that want to help you if you do have, you know, as we start, you know, who knows how we'll we'll open up this month or not, but. As more and more people are getting out with the nicer weather, you know, these these infections will continue. We um, we're lucky, very lucky. They're so low, but um, you know, we still have no way to protect ourselves. So, other than distancing, wearing a mask, which is not comfortable, but please, you need to wear them. It is the um, it is the law right now. I assume it's a law. As today. As of today. today. Um, so if you're out so, in public, just put it on. Um, even outside. Yeah, even outside. Um, you know, wherever you are, you can you can wear it. Um, you know, if you're by yourself going for a walk, not super necessary. But if you're going to be on a sidewalk passing people, you can't keep that six-foot distance. You need to have that mask on um, unless, obviously, you've, if you have a health issue. So, you know, the other thing is we can't be policing everybody. So you know just just because somebody doesn't have a mask on we don't know if they have a medical condition that that does not allow them to have a mask maybe they have asthma they don't have a way to um you know to put a mask on and still breathe this is not fun to breathe in but um and depending on the thickness of the mask so you know it's it's not our job to be out there policing everybody but just if you set your, an example for yourself your own example for your children for your family for your neighbors that you are um, thinking about them and protecting yourself and protecting them, um, it catches on. More and more people I see are wearing them now. And, you know, again, it's, it's, it's the law right now when you're out in public. But just if you set the example, it, it, um, it helps other people feel comfortable doing the same thing. So please continue with that. Um, do you have any other things to add other than well we we have had really good compliance with our businesses in town yes um, i was had a homeland security meeting yesterday and uh the outlook for ppe is much better it seems to be stabilized in the state we're still really short gowns um people are tr still trying to track down gowns but there's not the shortages of ppe it's not, there's not a lot of stockpiling but there's it's just not as short as it was. Um, and Bay State now is, te is able to test and get your return of the test in like 12 hours instead of three or four days, which is huge. huge help. Yeah. That's been a huge help. Um, if they we have, agree to test you. Yes, yes, yes you still have to that's meet true. the criteria. That's, that's the hugest problem. There's just, you know, the virus hasn't gone away and, and, we, and you have, we don't have widespread testing yet, but it's getting better. Um, there's about 70,000 cases here in Massachusetts. We've had, unfortunately, 4,200 deaths, more than 4,200 deaths, which is horrible. Um, but the hospitalizations, um, about 5% of those um, that are really sick end up in the hospital. Um, 
I mean, that get sick are in the hospital. So it's been a, a little about 3,500 people right now in the hospital. Um, and it's trending down, which is really good. Um, but it's really, really important that people, um, you know, like Trevor said, what we do today determines who's going to be sick in two weeks. Mm -hmm. There's a, like a two-week lag. So even though, I mean, it, it seems like there's an uptick in activity, mm -hmm. stuff that we've had to do, but um, part of it is I think people, you know, the weather's getting better and people are getting fatigued about staying inside and staying, you know, home. But we really, we gotta, we got to hang on because really, it really determines how healthy we are. The virus hasn't gone away. It's, it's, it's scary to me because, um, you know, the schools have been shut down, so the kids that have been vaping haven't been exposed. The, our younger mm -hmm. kids, um, you know, haven't been exposed. They have this, um, you know, it's just a small percentage of kids, but it's still a percentage of kids that um, have a inflammatory reaction to the COVID virus. And so they're trying to sort that out, and, and they don't really know what to look for, or what the underlying issues are, why some kids react and get so very, very sick and they start, their whole body shuts down. I mean, we just, we can't take the risk. And, and, and I know people are getting frustrated. It is frustrating. You want to get a haircut. You want to, you know, just be normal. Go to TJ Maxx or something and buy some junk. Whatever. <laughs> you just feel like you need to get out. But we need to, we need to be, cope with this and, and, and hang in there. I mean, People, our community is wonderful. We, you know, the, the seniors delivered May Day flowers. You know, there was deliveries going around. Mm -hmm. And, really you know, nice. there's food deliveries and all kinds of stuff. And so if you know somebody that needs something or needs help, please let us know. Because our community does really care and is trying very hard. And, yeah. and I know we can do um, cover people if if I've, if things are I've been so thrilled desperate. to watch um, you it know our, the Facebook page and people um, helping each other and making masks and putting them on their fence so people can grab and um, just reaching out to help everybody that has a need um, it, it's just been really wonderful to see how our community pulls together to help each other pretty moving so um, we're having weekly our, our emergency dispensing group for the four towns south county you know has a weekly call every week we have at least 25 people on the average that call in we're sharing the status of what's happening in our communities and how we're coping you know thinking about how to deliver the seasonal flu vaccine how we're going to cope with you know ordering more syringes and stuff ahead of time so that you know, we can make sure everyone in our community gets vaccinated as soon as there's a vaccination available. Um, we're working, Darius, our, our superintendent is so wonderful to work with. He's, you know, he's trying to hash out issues and, and work with us as boards of health. I mean, it, it's really impressive the amount of work that's going into mm -hmm. thinking this stuff through. So please, please continue to do what you're doing um, and, and hanging in there because it's mm -hmm. really paying off for us as a community. Any other comments on the COVID update? Or no? um, there's other discussion items. It's sewer and wastewater update. So I we really don't have a whole lot to talk about there. The design, um, you know, the phase one is still in design. They're, um, they're getting quite a ways through the design. They slowed up a little bit. They were going to do the geo borings like the end of April, but with the COVID stuff, it's slowed up how people can get out and move, and they're just trying to figure out their new way. But so that'll happen. The boring geo borings um, at the plant will happen, you know, early part of May here. How about the um, the measurements for the clarifier? Did that That's done? done. Yeah. Oh, so good. the clarifier is all set. It's gone out. They're they're producing that. We won't see it until you know end of the summer and early fall. So. Um, but that, that's all on track and, and going well. So that project's really, really moving along well and the design is moving along well. Um, we'll, you know, um, we'll probably have a lot more answers in the next, you know, four or five weeks. We'll probably start getting together and doing, doing some meetings on the design stuff and, and kind of nailing down all, all of that. Um, and uh, we've been talking about a couple other up a couple other areas um, about the the sewer, but really we're in a holding pattern on that. Um, the the other items were the um, we talked a lot about the FY20 
and 21 budgets, um, annual town meeting schedule, but the warrant we haven't addressed yet. So why don't we dig into that a bit? And um, There's a couple things out that I haven't thrown in yet yep. that are on my list and yep. the grant matches. This is just a, a draft right now yeah, it's of, a draft. of the meeting. And, and so, you know, we have um, a couple of When does the warrant articles. have to be out to be legal? Two weeks? Week. A week. One, one Seven week. days. Seven days, that's Seven it? Days. Okay. So All right. um, we'll Not try to get it done. You know, oh, no, before. it'll be yeah. done. Yep. I think we may have to have a meeting next yeah. week if we have, if I want yeah. you guys to look please, at this. Please because do. the grant match, I have a couple grant match questions out, and some of them relate to the conversation earlier. So, so. it might need, so next week is a heavy week for uh, school committee meetings. Yes. So there's Frontiers meeting, I think, on Tuesday, Deerfield's meeting on Wednesday. So um, we should have some better kind of idea on what we're doing with budget a bit as far as how the and schools as soon relate as we get that information from you guys yeah after darius has presented yep. it to you guys that'll be helpful for yeah. brenda and i to yep. look at to finish all that up yeah, and get I that over I as soon as we can i was just going to say it doesn't make sense to make any decisions on this since you only have to do it out a week out well the, the well i just the budget Until we have a little more time on the no, warrant no, no. i just want to make sure i have all yeah, the warrants. no but i meant not we don't have to do this oh, we don't by have to. next week no no exactly no. yeah yeah i want to i want to make sure I have that to, we have there's some language i was missing so yes. that's what i was concentrating on i was mm -hmm. trying to get some of that language i mean down. i don't mind waiting i mean i don't mind doing so it the following week yep i i just want to make sure that we whatever we decide is we can stick with Yes. Right. Oh, the budget. Yeah. 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 No. And we'll, we'll again. We'll revise it later on in the year. But um, so the f so the f article one is just report to the officers, and then pretty common. And then article two is the fiscal year unpaid bill, um, which would be um, oh, this was the energy. Right. This was so. This was the last part of the. So we did a green community green. Green Communities Grant mm -hmm. to do the boilers over and LED lighting at the school, and there's an unpaid bill yes. from last year. It's about eight thousand bucks or so that we're going to take out of free cash. Okay. Um, and I so, just put that in there. I mean, I yeah, we can adjust to where it's got to go, but we did right. need to capture that bill to be paid because um, I think we got oh, it's 130 thousand or something. But there's a little bit left over of work. There was that some was, confusion. It at was. The end. We've had to dig through it. It was it's additional work one. that really wasn't in the grant, but while they were there, needed to be done. So I think that's oh, kind of where that came from. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so we need to move on that. And then um, the elected officials' compensation, which um, I don't think anything's changed there over last mm, year. I don't think so. I did check in. You guys have the same stipends as normal. I checked. We in do. With Ken. Okay. Yep. That Ken said that. <laughs> yeah, the like, chair. Oh. I mean, the the chair gets a bit more than the um, the members, but other okay. than that, everything else is is identical. Acknowledgements, obviously, the gifts to the town from you know DA and mm -hmm. any other any other you know, Woman Hill and the and all. So, um, library interest is a common art article as well. Revolving funds, um, which we'll deal with, um, and the classification compensation plan, which really is hasn't. Um, we would have a change. We would yes, be, and you guys right. vote this every year. I went we back do. and I looked yep. at several years. So. Yep, we do, and that's that's you know again allowing people to do their steps, and I think we had voted a one and a percent, one and a half percent, omnibus budget. And so that's obviously the large budget we're waiting on. The reserve fund, which is pretty common. We always, we haven't really spent any of that this year. We may have some transfers at the end of the year with all that's going on, but that's been in pretty good, pretty good balance. And we'll keep that, I think around the hundred. The wastewater treatment enterprise fund, which is just money that we, um, we have now an enterprise fund instead of, you know, out of our regular budget every year. Um, SCEMS is the same way, South County EMS. Um, so, so a lot of this is boilerplate following yes, exactly. most of the pattern you had. Mm -hmm. I just give it identifiers because it's easier for you to discuss an article if you have a title for it. Yeah. Um, where's the, there should be an article saying that we're going to transfer the rent money. Yep. It's further it's in. Further oh, you okay. have yep. two we're options. We're working on that. We'll so get there. We have <laughs> all right. All right. Have I just didn't want. No, nope, we're not going to miss that. that. I want to discuss that a little bit tonight. To that, that was part no. of the reason. Not everything is filled in because yeah, I was doing research on that one. Here. So I the know, OPEB Liability that. Trust, um, again, I would love to see this increase, but we're just going to move forward with what we have right now, That's which is 4%. That's what Brenda's got plugged in right yeah, now. Yeah, she does. Yeah. 
um, the capital stabilization fund, um, which I don't know if we have any money going into I that don't, this year. I don't, and I put it, I left it in there. Yeah. I, we originally we were talking about like a hundred thousand, but, but I, yeah, who I knows may have at not. I had a bunch of X's on the after yep. I talked to Brenda. I may not have X'd out of the right one. And I think on the I think 19th, when we were cutting, when we were cutting. That was one of the things. I that think was one so of the too. And I cut. think I think they I probably missed that X. Article fourteen go is me. our capital projects, which I think when we meet on the nineteenth, I'd love to go. You know, have Jeff and everybody. Let's go through that one item at a time again and just see if there's anything that can be pushed off. Um, I know that Brenda's already worked well, on a few things. Well, keep in mind, all that grant stuff you're talking about has to fit into this somewhere. And I so I just sent, I shot yeah. an email off to Chris with a, yeah. tab, give me a tabulation. Right, because you know we have to decide whether we're, we're, we can do all that. Um, the Frontier Regional School Capital, which is. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. This is the language that I got from and I haven't actually talked to Darius. I was going to ask him. These are the warrant articles, right? Yeah, this, yeah, is this the isn't warrant the article. large bill. This isn't the large item. This is just the warrant articles. And I don't know if he's going to pull those off or not. Okay. I think they're going to I've talk got about that. Yep, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. because that's really where just, they should be. Just check and make sure that the wording is the same for yeah, all four. Yeah, that's what yes. I did. I went yep. back to his email and pulled it from the wording. Okay. Yep. So he's, we'll probably find out after next week whether yep. these are still in there or not. Okay. Um, the out of district will be in there. Um, I know we, we, we still have yeah, the students still have at Smith, student. Smith Vocational Community Preservation Fund is an annual thing, the 350th annual celebrations. You know, we're not spending it, but I think it's important to set it aside. You know, life isn't stopping. We still need to celebrate. And that I think is still in the budget as well. We didn't yep. cut, there hasn't, we've made adjustments in revenues. Right. And the things that we had talked to department heads about were things that we had made cuts before and those Original. we discussed yes at the yep. last meeting we had together those we discussed we did yep uh select board contract authority and this is to vote authorize select board negotiating this is a common every year thing that's boilerplate yep um and it can be moved around authority. that was where it was i that's tend fine. to suggest that we put boilerplate up at the front yeah just get it knocked out of because i could pull yep. it out of the i just I was really following the structure and so yeah I, no I, we could slide those to the front for sure I can move them around yeah. now the next uh, so article one is un, unused borrowing authority that's a pretty boilerplate thing as well um, and then here's the scams there's article 22 and 23 which we need to kind of sort through maybe tonight and figure out what we want to do and maybe we need a little bit more answers but right um, and I did check to see if I had any input from Council and I couldn't find anything. I'll in my find email. it for you. I have it. Um, I know that there was there was language on this. Yeah, I just we were deciding. So can I say what I was thinking? Yeah, and then you guys okay. um, chime in and maybe I'm way off. But I know the intent of that. I think we have it about thirty six thousand bucks a year for rent. Right. So and that was uh, that was a savings over what scams had been paying before because of the building we're in. Um, but um, it doesn't mean because we have a new building, we don't charge rent. So all the four towns have, or three towns have decided that this was the amount of money that was gonna be spent for rent on the building um, to house SCEMS in that building. And the intent was to take that amount of money and set it aside, a lot like the South Deerfield Fire Department does, and so that we have money set aside to address capital expenditures on that facility in the future. And there's two and maintenance. and maintenance so there's two different avenues to do this correct so one of them would be your annual maintenance which you would then would be the lawn mowing the snow plowing the whatever needs to happen around the building garage door repair, garage door repair any kind of b building maintenance throughout a year that you need in that building so that's kind of a subset of money and then the balance of the money um, would be going into either a revolving fund or a stabilization fund um, and I think my view is that, and I think w is to put that money into a stabilization account. So maybe we decide on 80% of the money that we get, or pick a number, 75, 80% of that money that we get in rent every year goes into a stabilization fund. So it requires a two thirds vote to get out, to spend. Um, it gives some protection to the money, but it is strictly focused on maintaining that building so when it needs a roof in 20 years when we want that to do an addition in 10 uh whatever you know something happens to the building and we need to 
repave or we need a fence or we need whatever might need to happen for the shelving units or whatever might happen, you know, something they want to redo, a new something inside to maintain the building and to keep the up, keep up the building and not have to go back to the taxpayers again, um, this would be a revenue source to deal with that. We'd love to do it with every building we have in town. We don't have that ability. This is a unique opportunity because of the gift of the building and the cooperation between the three towns that we have the ability to put money aside and protect that to have money to, to work on this stuff in the future. I think that there also needs to be kind of a, a relief valve because that money can build up, you know, say nobody does anything for 20 years on the building. Hard to believe, but say nothing happens, then that winds up with a very large amount of money into it. It could bleed off into the general fund. Mm -mm. I mean, it is a town you can't building. can't do that. You have to change the purpose of the stabilization fund. Correct. We, so there may need to be a change. Or, so that was my but main concern mind. is that you needed to be able to spend that money and have the most flexibility, but also have the most protection. So it wasn't called a slush fund. It was two thirds vote to get it out. You spend it only on the operations and the, the maintenance of that building and or future construction work, addition, something like that. Um, because that's the intent of the three towns when they put this together and wanted to do this. We didn't have to spend to build a building. The but idea take was to care have of the one inside. that we build. Right. So, so one thing, one thing you should know. So if you're looking, you're evaluating two different things. Like, like you said, stabilization sits and grows for the purpose of the maintenance mm -hmm. on that building. Um, no, no. For if we have to, well, Replace the roof right. is a maintenance That's issue. That's what the stabilization is But also, is for. I, I want to make sure we can, if we have, if, if, if to keep our service viable, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen right. with medical insurance and what, what they're going to charge for ambulance rides, okay? So w right now, it, it's viable, but we might have to have an expansion to be more viable in the future. So if we need to expand and we have to put on another bay, I want us to That's, be able to tap that. into that money. It's just like any because other capital Because none of us as towns can afford right. a capital project. And, and, and this... So that's the plan. But, but I think we also need to... So this wording to, will allow that. I yes. think so, but we also need yes. to make sure you that... Sure. I think... I'm see, I don't, okay. I don't want all of it to go in because, no, no, you, no. because you need a certain amount for the plowing and the... So, you know, the mowing and the, the general maintenance, well, which might be an 80% of the bill a year or something. I don't know. Well, it might not be. Or, but, right. But so here's that. the thing. When you set this up, it's just like a capital stabilization, except that you get to choose the percentage that you're putting into stabilization from whatever the revenue source is. I was just going to say, I would like a little bit of money in the maintenance account because, like, the that's right. garage door broke. Right. right. That's a, you know, that's most of our rent for that year. And so there you go. So That's if we could put a year's or two rent, we could maybe put a, a token amount into the stabilization or not. You can't not. do less than 25%. Right. And so the whole point is when you set this up, you define the percentage. And what you do is you say, okay, we're going to put, for instance, 80% <sighs> is just an easier number to break up. So you have 80% in stabilization, 20% can then be funneled toward the needs that you have for the building, like maintenance, plowing, all of those things that take up crews from other yeah, towns. I think 25% like that... goes into a general maintenance fund, the rest goes in that, because that'll put 9,000 bucks a year into maintenance. Yes. But that wouldn't have covered the garage door this That's year. fine, but, if but it garage, will in five years. Door, yeah, it's under you, warranty right now. You, well, one, but. We go and say, okay, which we have you to take vote. it to town meeting and say we need this. Meeting, we and, take well, out the two true. thirds of the money. And, you yeah. know, we we'll probably have to expend the money beforehand, right? But then go to the town meeting and get okay. reimbursed for that. Because yeah, that's the thing. You that. definitely want. Remember how all this came together. It took a lot of work yeah. on all your parts and all the all the select boards and finance committees right. in the other two towns to come to an agreement. And that agreement is memorialized by each town meeting. Yeah. Hmm. So. You know, maintaining I just this wanted building. to make sure that we're well, flexible to really our, make sure. Right. I don't, All you I don't have to want do anything is post to get... a town meeting and we can get the money as long as people okay. don't disagree with us. And it's I a stabilization so, fund for that. Right. So 
we're not going to take money out of that to buy a new pickup. Exactly. So the, the no, and that's department. the reason. Right. It's that's very the protective key. of that's the. That's the key. It's yeah. So I think dedicated the, the, to South County. The seventy-five right. percent goes into a stabilization account, and the twenty-five okay. percent yearly goes into yearly maintenance, and that should be plenty to do everything, whatever's left. You know, I so don't that know, revenue the source goes, it is anymore. appropriated for the maintenance needs that other departments okay. are helping perform. Right. You know? Okay. Yeah, you're right. You've got the highway over there doing stuff. You've got different things happening, and um, because we want to make sure plenty. we keep them whole, because we're adding a right. whole another. Right. That's what level I want to make sure that we're not, you know, mm -hmm. limping along when there's no need. Right. Well, if we I put think, the I money away, enough. if we find we have a need, we can take it to them. But the good right. thing about a stabilization fund is it helps you save. I right. mean, you guys have we're made be... such inroads. In savings, I've watched that as I look through these these reports and stuff. So this is a good way to keep that going. I yeah. think that makes sense. Yeah. So 70, All right. So I think if we do that of a seventy five percent in the stabilization, are you, are you okay with that? Twenty five. Yeah, I was thinking somewhere between seventy and eighty. So yeah. Okay. So there we, you know, and that that gives us that would be about nine thousand a year, and you know we'll tr you know in four or five years you'll know okay maybe we have to take it to town meeting and adjust that we're, we're, we have right, extra which you too would much do in an or article. we we have you know it doesn't cost nine thousand to do all the maintenance a year so we break it back to eighty percent or something like that instead um, but I think I think it would make sense to do that I mean unless you, we think nine is too much I don't know um, I mean it will be. It might be a little much in the beginning, but as more and more maintenance happens, I mean, they want to put some bushes in or that kind of thing. You know, there's, well, I know there's, there's stuff that needs they, to be filled out there right a bit now. still. I mean, they yeah. got in and just kind of just let it ride for a little bit, mm -hmm. but there's stuff they want to, you know, maybe put a, a fence up around the AC unit or little things like that that they would have the ability to well, maintain. Well, there's little things that, that have building. to be done now, right? Like for the Lighting. plumbing, for the washer and dryer. Right. That kind that of stuff. That has to be done. Yep. So that kind so. of stuff they could do with that. And that's you know. true, and that would be enough to cover that. I think yeah. it would. I, I just want to make sure we are not cheaping out. No, it doesn't, okay. no, it doesn't seem okay. that we would be. Um, All right. But, but let's think about it over the next, you know, talk to Zach, think about that, bring it to the SCEMS meeting. I don't know if you have another one before no, our meeting. we don't no. have another one before town meeting. Um, okay, what well, they I know did, the attend. The just intent. so everybody no. knows, I checked in with Zach about this. And okay. He said he didn't think that they had voiced a specific request right. for a type of article, Right. but that they had, and so I'm checking An in, intention. but they wanted it held in, in, in some manner. So yeah. we've, mm -hmm. these are the options that DLS gives us. Right. Um, Stabilization is, I think it's a, it's a. It gives the townspeople a little it more gives the comfort. The finance committee feels that we're more monitoring comfortable. The money, right. Yes. It's not That's some no, sort I'm of slush fund. No, I'm fine with that because that was. I mean, I just wanted to make sure it was flexible enough. Right. Well, if we, and if we and were it seems like the 75 and 80 small does. expansion right. to keep viable. Right. You know, then that words, money is just to, building up over build the up course of the, well, the we, years. Took on Halffield or we took on yeah. Conway or something to make sure we're viable. Right. I think over the years that'll build but up enough. By being a stabilization fund, it also makes those funds more stable, secure. Right. So it gives a security blanket to the other two towns what right. that money's being used for. Yeah. Their yeah. confidence level oh, no, rises no, I'm, I'm in our fine. fiduciary yeah. ability. I'm fine with it. Okay. So, I, I just yeah. wanted to make sure it was just flexible. That was my problem with it. It's earlier. no different than taking anything. It's yeah. going to town meeting, which, despite the 14 days, is not the hardest thing all of us have had to do. Yep. I no, think that's you'd good. asked me that five years ago. You would have gotten a different answer. <laughs> so that's good. No, um, this is put, this COVID. So stuff is yeah, putting out and uh, everything in pro perspective. Now. So we'll do uh, so twenty-three I lost at it seventy-five as we got percent. Down to the last few articles, and then I got to the marijuana article. Did you so read we've my got. Well, let me just. So we have the solar panels on the landfill. Yep. Do you think we'll be somewhere ready for that? That's what we're working on. You're hoping. And we're waiting okay. for, for Nexamp to get back to us right now. And then the old Frontier Solar. So that's the solar off of Set Right Road. Yeah, and I don't know where that's Here's at. what you all should know. This is, I pulled language together. I've been sort of cobbling things together. Um, that article language may change because I waited to see if there were particular things you wanted me to pull off or put on um, based on my notes and what yep. we remember you had voted. Um, 
And so council read. hasn't seen this, but this yeah. is a project that's been going for a while, actually. I, yeah, I just, just don't know where we're at pilot. yet. And I don't know if, if John Cordier's worked on that or I mean, he no, worked on actually, the last one. I think um, Karen was working with the assessors on it. Okay. And she sent it to me when I first got here and I didn't have a lot of right. so capacity we to back. read through it. Well, now I've done some reading and I spoke, to, I got some help from Beth Greenblatt. Thank yep. God. I know. She's I love wonderful. that woman. Yep. Um, and so she's going to, we just need to make sure that the underlying um, evaluations that we use for this mm -hmm. are acceptable by DOR. And we're going to send them one thing. We have to be careful about the contract language. So I had given it to, right. to Lisa and she's looking at it. She yeah. and Ben Taylor are looking at it right now. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, so Let's see. that may or may not get done. We have article. We're not sure for the um, if land something acquisition. happens and we're not ready for something. If we put the article in, you can always pass over. Absolutely, yeah. Which is the North Main Street land acquisition? Would right. Be the next one. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so you've got the the one that we had already dealt with. Yep. And then um, the possible other one. And keep in mind, there's a couple. There's a couple. These articles have to be in here in addition to the community preservation articles. Right. Yep. So there was a question about that pilot precision one that I need to talk to you about offline. Yeah, there was we, a lot of work there to go yeah, still. We, we, um, I, I, think I may just have to call her and talk to her. Yeah. See just, if I can, okay. I'll call her. We're, we're going to do the what we have done in the past. Yeah. And then um, I think that's what Skip Let me did. call Skip because I actually haven't bugged yeah. Skip because I knew he was busy and then he became less busy. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. haven't called him. Because well, we've been busy too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, All right, so these, these yeah, last few articles we obviously need work on. Um, and, then, and then the marijuana bylaw. So the marijuana bylaw. Yeah. If you so, scroll down a few pages, you will find an email from Lisa. So this is, oh, okay. Oh, no, that's Skims Rent. That's. Go past the Skims Rent to the next one. Okay. So it's basically okay. Lisa's yeah. comments back to me. Yeah, but I, I thought no, we I don't were think thinking that's accurate, of though, right? I, so she's saying you can't yeah, amend because that? it's an amendment. Because it hasn't gone through the amendment, the change in that language has not gone through the amend, the hearing process. But I, I thought that you could. Um, so my understanding is that we would, we were going to put the Evans one on the warrant. See, that's the and thing. And then make a. An amendment to that on town meeting floor. But the amendment hasn't been vetted fully through the planning board process. That's what she's saying. Huh. So the other option is to just get signatures yep 10 people so okay so now there's a new so uh signatures for a whole new bylaw. i can talk to you i can okay. talk to you about yeah. it it's, so it's not complicated actually all right so we'll figure that out because I, I think that's very important to get on because it i, I hear what you're saying things, what you but could I want do, to do is it you correctly. could ask the planning board the problem is is it's hearings Oh, this thing drives me nuts. I know. I know um, it does. All, so know. the hearing They're process, itchy. that particular language that Don discussed with you wasn't discussed during the hearing process. Correct. And so the amendment to the it. Amendment, amendment itself. to the other thing. Yeah. Um, so okay. all right. All right. We'll figure that out. This was why I asked her because well, we may not, years uh, ago we had have a, another a similar question, but it was a planning board article and it was years ago. So we had to go go back and forth yeah. and really push a hearing process. Well, we know we're going to have another meeting. <laughs> I'm just. Yeah, I mean, we have at least one more meeting. Yeah, I just because I'm not I'm confused it done, on it. What's um, that? Oh, I, I can help you with it, but I, yeah. I just don't. Um, I mean, I know what the intent is that I would like to see. But I know. We just got to make too. sure it's done legally. But I just right. want to make we sure don't it's be... done in the way that. Yeah, we we'll stand up, and done. yeah, the intent yeah. is right, and 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 I I still want to get working on the planning board yes. some uh, work and try to talk about with them. Um, they what, want to have that conversation too. We, so we need an in-depth. Well, that conversation was the point of the having the healthy the soils because you you want to make sure you're you know saving your 
right. best soils for, mm -hmm. for and food so production. And these elements, they haven't had, they may not have heard from. I'm sure right. some of them have, but one of the things that they were clear about in the last planning board meeting I went to, which was the one before the one you went to, yeah. um, they want to have this conversation. They want to work with you guys. Well, but I, I, they have ideas. We know you have ideas, so it's going to be a work in progress. But they also want to see each other face to face, and that's I think like everyone else, it's idea, very hard for them. That I wanted to do was just to separate this one facility out from all of that other baggage. I know, and and I wanted to correct the you know right, my, that my mistake foot. from the original um, right zoning was to say within Deerfield. Right. So in other words, you're not penalizing okay, so Deerfield. We'll, We'll talk offline. Yeah, and I, out what's I, going on I just I, the hearing thing. I, I was afraid she might say that. Okay, all right. So we'll we'll deal with that. So I guess that's the only article left, right? And then the rest of the and then, stuff we're yeah, going to deal the, with on was another the time. The grant matches. Those are the only things I hadn't slid an article number in for. So grant matches, which were they? That was remember. Oh, we have grant matches, so we have two. We have the MVP grant matches, and we, don't and we have, have the green communities, and that's okay. that's what. I ran out of time. Yep. No, that's, that's trust Casey. me. No worries. It's fine. <laughs> no worries. It's fine. You this need to do better. <laughs> I do. You want to throw Actually. this out? You know what? It is itchiness. <laughs> right? Yeah, oh. I know. All this COVID it affects, I know. It affects your, you end up touching your face a lot more. And I, I, that's so counterproductive. I'm trying, I'm trying just to touch the mask. So uh, we don't have a lot of other. Just disinfect my entire area. I don't think we have much else. The, you know, the mail list was the board of health. No, and um, actually the two things on the mail list were kind of funny. <laughs> I, I just want to say mask um, we guidance. did have a 350th um, uh, anniversary um, meeting last last this last month, and it was you know uh, Jennifer Remillard is in charge of the fundraising, and yep. she has they that committee. Is got so much energy, they do. so organized, they and it's so exciting. And yep. things are really happening. And so, anyone that's interested in the 350th, please, please step forward. Where um, we it's don't be a fun have, um, we have to check the exact date, but that we're going to have our parade and fireworks either the first or second um, Saturday in Jul uh, June, June yep. of 2023. And so, I mean, we're, yeah, we're really, be fun. I, I think people, people are ready, are, are ready for a party. And, and we're going to have the one we had for the 300. That's right. Yeah. Right. That was or Hatfields even. That was well, Hatfields. we're going to have a wicked party. There. Wait, and, when's um, the party supposed to happen? Well, it's going to be that. It's, it's that a whole night. year of events. It's going to start right. out with well, the fireworks beautiful. and parade and party would probably be on that. The yeah, first the, part of June. The, June. the first oh, or good. second weekend of June. We won't. It smelter. depends on Frontier's uh, calendar. When they graduate, it will be the other weekend. Yeah. Oh, nice. But it will be fireworks See, and it will be the parade. This is what I don't know because other things take big up space. Big giant parade and yeah. um, Holly Lankowski and bands. Paul Shesky are cheering that committee. Yeah. They're going to do it's, great it's just, work. It's going to be so exciting. So yep. if sure people Paul's are interested, they really, really should you know, drop their name with Casey or Jen in the um, yeah. Selectman's Shoot office. Shoot us an email. Um, and our next meeting is um, May 18th. It's a call-in meeting. Yeah. Um, and it, I mean, we're really, I have to say I'm so excited and that's not just because I'm locked up, but uh, that, 20th, right? 20th is our meeting. 20th meeting. is your next meeting. May 20th. Yeah. No, May Oh, 18th, for your, for your, for your 350th. Gotcha. Yes. Sorry. So Sorry. Too many she meetings. is the 18th. We all have the 19th and then we have the 20th. 20th. So. Yep. Oh, oh we so we're meeting on the 20th? Okay. Yes. yes. So and the we have a regular well. meeting on the 20th. And, and I wanted to warn you at spines. the regular meeting on the 20th. Remember we had body art. We had done, we yes. had started yes. the hearing process yep. for that. I'm going to ask you to put it off for a while because it's fine. Well, we nobody's don't doing them right now anyway. So, yeah. well, no, it's not, a, uh, because it's under review. If anyone is coming in to petition for business, that's our regulations. Well, we can continue the hearing. It's yes. just, we got to, can we just put it on the um, thing as continuing? Oh, it's on, it, it's on the agenda because you have to open it and continue it if you're yeah, going to do it. Yeah, just continue it. So just to hit on this Board of Health, um, you know, this, this kind of piece of letter from the Chief Association's yeah. attorney, and it was about how to enforce the mask thing. Um, and so it's only a Board of Health or a Board of Health agent that can enforce it unless you... 
I do this in quotes, deputize or have a memorandum of understanding between your police officers and the Board of Health. I'm not really interested in policing this at the moment, but I would like becomes, us to print a couple signs because um, yes. I notice people, people, there's so many people out walking. I, I just, again, it's the perception people are outside and the perception of six feet mm -hmm. is, you know, six feet is actually pretty far away. So. Mm -hmm. I'm trying my damnedest to keep you guys six feet. I know, I know. Yeah, but you do good. This is six feet. We're yeah, good. this is six feet. But yep. what we need to do is just have, I think we, we have plenty of money, you know, from yep. the, the, the... We make some signs we'll and talk about it. We'll just have a couple it. signs to say, please, in the interest of public health, wear a mask on the sidewalks, yep. stuff like that. Can I ask but, a question? Yeah. Sure. Did we ever join that sign group at the Cobb? I don't know years ago yes we did we did so can i ask kevin well, if he cog, can help us with signs yeah. the cog did you know they did those nice ones for the distancing that i put up at sugarloaf and and i did get a hold of um debbie shriver and she she did put them up oh perfect on the mountain as well but and, and a sign kind of like that like a campaign yeah no that's sign. what i'm thinking of just, just a couple a that we areas, could just reminding but, people but we could put them on you know we have the uh drop off and pick up parking mm -hmm. signs up in old yep. deerfield we could plop them on those signs and there's a couple you know bus signs and different ones that we could just stick on mm -hmm. here on Main Street I, I honestly feel that most of our community is going to be really compliant because mm -hmm. we have people are being compliant and 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 they've been really cooperative we haven't had the encounters that other tracing. people may have had yeah. Um, yeah. oh I forgot about community tracing okay just one more thing yeah, sorry okay. um, what what happened I, I did explain the last meeting we went from the red caps to community tracing collaborative and what happens it's been a, a little bit rough and i have to admit one, i've one. been um a little bit Is disappointed in deerfield mm -hmm. has been working very hard to ha establish a relationship with the ctc the community tracing and it's been a little slow um, they had a glitch with our Maven, which is our, you know, um, Epi uh, contacting from the state system. Um, so that was a little bit of a problem. So it was supposed to be mandatory as of May 5th. It is actually starting, started today. Um, and so hopefully this is going to straighten out. We're, we're doing all kinds of outreach. Trevor is aware of this. We're, we've sent on some of our cases been a little disappointing but we've been able to control them we've been able to do the contacting but if if in in the future you have a COVID-19 exposure or you and you get the phone on the phone it'll, it will be an 833 or 857 number co mass COVID team will show up on your phone please answer the phone and answer participate the yeah. answer the questions and and follow the guidelines it will be their case investigator or contact tracer and then if you need help there'll be um, you know a resource person calling you like if you need to stay home and you can't you have no one to go out and get groceries for you they get groceries for you all that kind of stuff it's a complete package and it, it this it, it will be cheaper than the way we're financing it now is through you know an hourly amount we pay for public health nurse so please please be cooperative and try to do this and um sorry about that no I that's okay i, I just forgot about that. i, I want to make sign a motion. all three of those yeah we're going to make a motion to vote because I, I entertain a motion to vote the um annual town the town of deerfield annual town election for june yeah. june I'll, 8 I'll 2020 warrant no second it any further discussion all those in favor Dave Wolf from I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Okay, thank you. We will sign I all of them. We I know. I, get, I don't think we voted that. Uh, I just wanted yeah, to make sure I that know, got I'm done. Sorry, I, mean, I also want to ask if there's any um, but I think, public I comment. I think if you wouldn't mind signing all three we will. copies, yep. because just in case she yeah. needs an extra copy. Um, is there any is there any public comment on the line? I don't know, Jen. Does it, do people have the ability to to speak, or are they unmuted? I just want to see if. Um, yeah. Uh, everybody's on, I mean, they can unmute themselves except for, yeah, all of them can unmute themselves. Okay. If there's anybody that here. wishes to, um, have public comment or, you know, tell us anything or say hi, um, more than welcome to. 
No, this is Chris Harris. Uh, no comment. Thanks for all your efforts. Oh, thank you, Chris. Thank you so thank much you, for Chris, attending for all the time yeah. and listening. We really appreciate it. I, I want you to know I'm, I'm very appreciative. And Rocky Foley is another yes, one that always, always is yeah. interesting. Very nice. grateful. Yep. And there's only a, one other person and doesn't look like she wants to comment. So. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all Maybe very much. And thank please you, be Jennifer. safe. And um, we'll have more meetings to come. But um, just be safe and have a, have a yeah, great week. Yeah, be careful. And, and don't forget your mask, yep. please. <laughs> Fun stuff. All right. Oh, have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Huh. And thank you, Jonathan. Oh, motion to adjourn. I make that motion. And Second no. it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.